وتاب سنو هنا سنوت ايتي مغورا وتاب سنو هنا سنوت ايتي رن ايشا كان دوكو كمال I hope you're doing well. We have another free talk and question and answer session. I've left the call and link in the chat, but I'm going to post it again just in case. Now, I need to fix this light. I will first share this. Bear with me. Okay, that's better. Can you hear me loud and clear? Oh, Anuket World Traveler, thank you. She wrote, yes, loud and clear, beautiful. Well, brothers and sisters, feel free. Let's talk, let's see what's up. I have to take the habit of looking up. I actually have the <laughs> a device there that is recording. And of course, I have the computer. So I use a computer for any um, anything that I share. I basically control live stream with the computer so i'm used to looking down so don't pay me no mind you see me looking down i had a look at yesterday last yesterday's live stream when the brother mr sharp was talking sometimes i was just looking down a lot but when i look down i have the screen as well so if you ever see me looking down don't think that you know i'm i'm annoyed or i'm not interested about what you're saying it's not the case i basically have two screens the one there and the one there so Feel free, brothers and sisters, let me know what's up, what you would like to talk about, what you would like to ask about. Take advantage. Take advantage. Let me know what's popping. Let me know what's new. Feel free to ask your questions or make your comments. A lot of times, I have some ideas, and I feel like uh, making a video to address some topic and in plenty of time I end up changing my mind. That's why whenever I have an idea, whenever there's a topic that I want to touch on, so it's good for me to be available, basically not being uh, at work or not driving because sometimes I have it in mind or I write it down and I feel, okay, I will, I will, I will address that later on. Once I have the time, or once I get home, a lot of time I end up changing my mind. And really, what I, what, I, what I had in mind, what I felt like talking about, is a situation regarding the Abrahamic believers and also some non Abrahamic believers who have this habit of talking down on Kemet. Now, just for the record,
there is uh, someone called Rabon who said that Kemet was dead. So I called him out. And when I say call him out, I'm not 100% sure what the connotation may be, but it might have a negative connotation. But I'm sure that in my video, I made it clear there was no beef that I wanted to talk. So yesterday, or the day before yesterday, he actually wrote a message to say that he just got wind of my video. And he basically said that he didn't want to uh, have a discussion about it. So that's his right. That's his choice. It is what it is. So he ended up his message with peace. So I wrote peace. And it is what it is. But then again, it's a shame when people make some statement and they cannot really expand on it or elaborate on it. It's very easy to say Kemet is dead because there are some people who practice the culture. There are some people who follow the culture. But it is what it is. It is what it is. I've said it before, but Abrahamic believers have a common interest in vilifying Kemet. Finance is a factor. They've been making money. And I don't expect them to say, well, you know, actually, the things that we were believing, the things that we thought, the things that we shared, the things that we claim, well, actually, it is not necessarily factual. And there is a religion in itself, the belief in itself. There is a religious literature, and for the Abrahamic believers, there is some sort of consensus when it comes to ancient Kemet. I, I said ancient Kemet. I don't even like hearing ancient Kemet. Um, I like to say ancient Egypt or Kemet. If some people receive some... Gratification in any kind, whether it's money or other kind of advantages, they will not necessarily come out out front and say it. What we need to do is to stay sharp. And we need to not fence ride. It's very important. Some people did fence ride and ultimately... They felt the heat. Anukit World Traveler wrote, have you had a chance to view Chief X channel? Really? I don't check out his channel. And sometimes I might look at someone's channel whenever he makes some statement that catches my attention. And I look at the videos and I look at the titles and most of the time that's just enough for me. Sometimes out of curiosity, I look at the video and I scroll through the video, really. I don't really look at the video, I scroll through the video, listen for, to a few seconds and then go up a bit later on and listen to a few seconds. Particularly with people who make some consistent statement that just don't make sense at all. I mean, we all make mistakes. I made a mistake in my video, came out in my art or uh, introduction to Kemet, I didn't mention Suten. The term really is Nesu. And Egyptologists back then thought it was Suten. They did not know about the honorific inversion or honorific transposition. So, you know how the seven goes. Nobody's perfect. See? So, it's not the only mistake I made in my life. Uh, when someone makes a mistake, so when someone makes a mistake and it's not something, he's not willingly lying. You know, it's not that bad. But some people are willingly giving up false information, knowing that it's false information, or they just make things up. But that individual, I mean, he, he's been very, uh, very reckless. So, you know, I don't, don't want to give him too much attention. Uh, you know, so... But hey, anybody's free to call in. So when I when I addressed him, I invited him. I contacted him. I never heard back from him. So man, 
He doesn't have to. It is what it is. And really, someone doesn't like him, man. Hey, it's cool. It's fine. It's fine. You know, you don't have to like it. You don't have to follow it. But to outright disrespect it. And I think that uh, it's, it's a bit funny because he said some very disrespectful things about Kemet, but not other, about other Abrahamic belief system or even non-Abrahamic belief system. You know, there's other kind of Asian religions or Asiatic religion. Uh, American spirituality or religion and even European as well. But it's not going that hard saying anything that bad about those things. You have to wonder why. Now, Anuket wrote, he's another one who doesn't believe Kemet was black African. Well, Bolivian is not knowing. But does he know? But does he know? Some people might have not seen that. So I will share it. I'm going to show you one of the most famous king of Kemet. Now, I will I will address keep the, the, the comments going, sisters. Sister, sorry. Um I will show you one of the most famous ancient Egyptian king, ruler, Pharaoh. So, Why is it? Oh, that's the way. There it is. This is Amenhotep the Third. That's from the Louvre Museum, Paris, France. One of the most famous museums in the world. Just have a look at his phenotype. It's the father of Akhenaten. You see, says number nine, the king. Amenophis the third. Amenophis is the Greek way. The more proper way is Amenhotep. Or for those who take the classes, Amenhotep, according to the transliteration, it will be more like Amen. Amenhotep the third. He is the father of Akhenaten. He is the grandfather of what you usually call King Tut. Tutank Amun or Tutank Amen, the living image of Amun. Or Imen. That's the 18th dynasty. And that was during one of during the period, one of the period that was the most prosperous for Kemet. And there are plenty of other depictions. See? Now there's something that I have started, but there's only so much I can do. What will be I'm looking for the Let me let me look for the URL. I, I want to put more material before I actually put the page. Okay, it's okay, never mind. I, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for now. You know, I'll leave it for now. But, but there's a page I'm preparing, and I mentioned that where I want to show some depiction of uh, several people from. Um, not from commit. So I will continue. But we have plenty of depictions where we can clearly see that there are black African. No denying, no doubt whatsoever. Now, Anuket World Traveler wrote, he calls himself teaching well. From the from the little that I've seen, he seems to be using Wikipedia a lot. And everybody can do that. Anuket wrote the other day he didn't believe they came from the South. 
I directed him to Labta Playa for his study. Well, even if they don't come from the South, we have their phenotype, and that's good enough. But it is what it is. It is what it is. All of a sudden, it seems that like people um, are so concerned about Nubia. There was some conflict with Nubia, indeed, because it appears that there was some alliance with the Asiatics or Amu. And all the while, there was some slavery going on in the Sudan, in Nubia. I did not hear all those people. How come they are conveniently so concerned about Nubia around 1400 BC? But when things were popping up in 2004, 2005, until the split and the new country called South Sudan, the newest country in the world, that caused Sudan to no longer be the largest country in Africa. Now it is Algeria. They were not concerned with the Janjaweed going and raping little girls and enslaving them. There was a book called Slave by an author called Mende Nazar, N-A-Z-E-R, if I'm not mistaken. I read it about a decade ago. I did not hear all those people who were allegedly so concerned about Nubia. There is the Bakht Treaty between the Muslims and Nubia. And Nubia was to send 360, 360 slaves every year to the Muslims. Now, some people with the slave mentality, even though they have a PhD, they call that being the victor. They call that having the leverage. And it's written in a book. I don't kid you. I'm not kidding you. So when it comes to that, we don't hear anything. But conveniently, for a strange reason, <laughs> some people are concerned about the fate of the Nubians around 1400 BC. How strange. How strange. But it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, we can talk and we can disagree. What I lament is the, the strong disrespect that's what I lament, you see. When I hollered at a PhD, that's because he was blatant. He, he came up with some blatant disrespect. He said, throw him in the garbage can, throw my ass in the trash can, throw I'm a rather slave making God away. I couldn't let that slide. So it was what it was. You understand what I'm saying? Now, besides that, there's the, the, the <laughs> I can say it's false, but hey, some people will obviously disagree, but the false claim of the black Arabs, jet black Arabs, I dealt with that. The article is there on my website. You have the address at the bottom. It's there. You add in slash English, or if you want, once you get there on that page, you will have the navigation bar on the top left corner of the screen. And you can uh, click on English, and then you scroll to the bottom of the page, and you will see um, color of the Arabs uh, and Prophet Muhammad at the emergence of Islam. And you can click, and you will see that I quoted uh, several uh, hadith, Sahih hadith. But anyway, um, looks like. Maybe there was some connection issue because on the other screen, it was frozen for a while. Well, actually, okay. Now, if there's any issue with the sound or the video, please let me know, okay? As a matter of fact, yeah, it's frozen now, isn't it? Hopefully, it's just my end. But the sound is going on, even though it's frozen. The sound is going on. Okay. We have Rek Train, who wrote, Have you ever heard of the Dongola War when the Arabs tried to invade Nubia in 642 AD? That must, that's probably around the time of the Bakht. That's probably around the time of the Bakht. But I have the quote. 
I have the quote somewhere, so I will look for it. Okay, I, I, I think I know where I will find it. So, there. Oh. 651 yeah so you wrote 642 yes um the quote that i have from a phd says that the backed agreement signed by both parties at the conclusion of the 651 6, 651 dash 652 battle so i presume it's the end the conclusion of the battle well or unless there were some other battles before, but that's around the same time period. Um, a red train wrote Nubia won. They got bar, bar, bar arrows that made 255 Arab soldiers blind. Well, okay, I don't know about that specific. I'm not familiar with that. I don't know if we can say that Nubia won because they had to send 360 slaves every year. Feel keep it coming. Keep it coming, brothers and sisters. Because you know how I get down when there's no participation. And look at Rote. Ubians was infamous for their bow skills. Well, as a matter of fact, we say Nubia. The root of the word Nubia is noob, which means gold in Medunecher or hieroglyphic in the ancient Egyptian language. But there is a term to denote uh, or to, to, to refer to a part of Nubia or let's say Nubia and it is Taseri. Now Ta means land and Seri is usually translated as the Baal. So Nubia can be translated as the land of the Baal. And Anuket wrote, yes, Ashwa Kwesi taught me that. And well, it's not coming up yet. It will come up in a few. Why isn't it? It's not showing up on the other screen. Well, I will do it. Oh, that's it. Takes a while. So, right train was true. This is what I've just quoted. And Anuket wrote, 
That is who I went to Kemet with to learn. All right. When did you go to Kemet, sister? I went in 2012. Next year is going to be 10 years. Next year is going to be a decade. Okay. The sister went three years after me. Okay. Are you learning a little bit of Medu Nature? Why don't you call in, sister? You don't even have to show your face because I know people are shy, you know? It'd be good to hear from you. You know? I mean, you know, don't force yourself. You don't feel like it, but if you if you don't mind, then here's a calling link. You and any other any other person. Oh, um, Afro Asiatic has joined us. What's up, brother? Now, uh, sister says. In the meantime, she says she wants to go again. I want to go again, actually, and I don't know about this summer, but lately, as everybody can see, there's been less attendance. So I don't want to say less interest. Now, however, it is true that. When I go live, I just inform the people like five minutes, half an hour before. When in the past, I used to inform people hours before or maybe even the day before or a few days before. But hey, you know, so many things going on. So I'm going through. I'm going through a lot of uh, learning and I work full time and I have family, two children. So there's only so much I can do, you know. And I don't mean to sound like uh, I'm bragging or acting like I have superpowers, but a lot of people who teach, they don't work full time. Some of them don't work at all. I mean, besides besides what they do, when they teach, they do that for a living. It enables them to leave. But the sister, look at us call. Thank you very much. How are you doing, sister? I'm fine. How are you? Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sister. Very, very, very loud and clear. Very clearly. How are you? Hotep, Senet? Hotep. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> all right. Well, you know. Well, there it is. I've said Senet. Senet means sister. Senet. Okay. Yes. And and if you want to say brother, you say Sen. Sen. All yes. right. That's why at the beginning uh, I say, well, I use the plural form. But at the beginning, I say, Hotep Senu. Senu is the plural of Sen. And I say, Hena, which means with. Uh, I'm sorry, it means and. It also means with. Hena means and. And I say, Senut. And Senut is the plural of Senet. So I basically say, Hotep brothers and sisters. Okay. So thank you for calling, sister. Thank you for calling. Yeah, no problem. Um... Yeah, I, I went in 2015. It was um, my dream trip. Really, I wish I could have joined um, with Dr. Ben when he was going in his heyday, but I was a little bit too young. But um, I've always wanted to go ever since I was maybe six years old. So I finally got the opportunity to do it, at least with the student of Dr. Ben Ashwar Kwesi. Mm. And um, it was the trip of a lifetime. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot. And I would like to do it again. Okay. It, it did break up on my end. Oh, I think okay. you were saying you would love to go again? Yeah, I would love to go again. Mm -hmm. Yes, same with me. And you're probably aware that there's this uh, new museum that, that will uh, open soon. Yes, that's exactly why I want to go, because unfortunately, um, when we went, they weren't allowing us to take photographs inside. So I didn't get to take any pictures. Um, and I know certain people were allowed times before, so I didn't really understand it. But I would like to go and, you know, see the new museum and see how they set it up. Um, take my son she, this time. Oh, uh, how old is your son? 
Uh, he just turned 17 last Monday. Okay, okay, okay. That sounds beautiful. And um, it's true that, like, um, uh, many years ago, they used to allow people not only to take pictures, but also to film, to take footage. But then for, for, for a good while, we were not allowed to, to do any of that. So when I went in 2012, it was the same. We were not allowed to take pictures or to film in the Cairo Museum uh, in, um, and the same for the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. And um, however, you might have heard me say that yesterday, but one one of the brothers who take the classes is actually in in uh, in, in in Kemet and in, in Egypt, let's say. And uh, now people are allowed to take pictures in the Cairo Museum. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, now I don't I don't know if they're allowed to film. I don't think so because I think you would have mentioned that to me. Uh, but you the people are allowed to take pictures now, and I expect that in the new museum, the Grand Egyptian Museum, which will be the largest museum in the world, or let's say the largest archaeological museum in the world uh I, I expect we'll be able to film it will be i'm sorry to take pictures at least i don't know about filming you know but um it would be a bad look that the the largest museum in the world they don't allow you to take uh, pictures in you know it, it would be too bad for publicity right exactly you so, know so i'm and, i'm excited to to do it I, you know i have a co-worker who's egyptian and mm -hmm. he's offered, you know, to um, get some people when I arrive with my son. Because I don't think I would do it Ashwa Kwesi again. Um, I would just really probably venture just around Cairo. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, show him the pyramids and Horror Marquette and the museum. Mm -hmm. um, some papyrus places. Uh, you know, and then he head back because it's kind of rough there, especially for women to travel alone. So he offered to, you know, have a family member kind of guide me around um, while I'm there just for a, a, a day or two or three, maybe. Mm. That's a nice offer. Indeed, when you are abroad, uh, it's good to have some local with you because you never know what can happen. And, yes. um it's nice you mentioned that uh, papyrus place because I recall that we went in a shop where they used to sell um, different type of uh, art and some of it was some painting on papyrus. So they actually, and you might have seen it as well, they showed us the process from getting the yeah. reed and then how it is cut and how it is, uh, uh, well, I don't have the word right now, but they, they, it's like they press it down, you know, put the leaves. Oh, you, you, you can I'm see you now. You. Okay. I'm trying to okay. show you my crown jewel, but I have to turn the phone around. Hopefully, you can see it. Oh, you... all right. Tutankhamun. Yes. <laughs> that was the reason you, why. You know what? Hold on, hold on. If if you don't mind, sister, leave the. Okay. Yes, that's it. Uh, I want it. I, I want to take the. I want to make a screen print because it looks nice. So just just leave it there. Okay. Can and, you see and, it really and, good? And, uh, yes, just one moment. I'll, I'll take a screen print. So that will be the caption for. Hold on, uh, just like this. No, oh, one second. One second. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I will change. I, I will change the thumbnail of this video. <laughs> yeah, crop it because it's a little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> so let me change it now it's beautiful that's my Did crown jewel I, you know mm -hmm. I searched that that papyrus place and I'm looking around and I'm picking all these different papyrus I want to buy and I, I just did a, a, a turnaround and it was staring me in my face and I said, everything that I wrote down, throw it away. I don't want it. This is what I wanted. I want it off the yeah. wall. I don't care how much it costs. <laughs> uh, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I got uh, it. Yeah, and, and I felt the same way when I saw an onk. It was a black. And um, I don't know if the material was, um, I don't think it was ivory, but... Um, it, it was not like it, well, it was not plastic. It, it, it was some sort of uh, stone-like material, smooth, 
Uh, but unfortunately, my son and my nephew, one of them broke it, you know. But um, but I, I still got those those three pyramids there. And uh, they have different size, so I took three this way. It's like oh. the, the one in the Giza Plateau. But whenever I move, I'll be able to have a nice setup. You know, I'll, I'll have, be able to have this... This thing on the table, so it look nice. But that 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 black onk, you know, I, I loved it so much. Uh, I showed it in a few videos back then. But uh, when I when I go back, I, I, I'll look for it, and I have a little scare. But this one, they gave it to me for free, you know, because they were happy of the purchases that I made. Yeah. But uh, and and I was, and I took some stones from the ground. Me too. All right. <laughs> now. This one has faded, but I did write in uh, in hieroglyphs. Well, this one still has it. I, I wrote Iped Asut, Iped Sut in uh, in hieroglyphs. So this was from the temple, and uh, I have uh, this one is fading away, but uh, I've I've put that hieroglyphic sign that stands for the H sound, and it's because it's from the temple of uh, eternity, the, oh. that uh, Ramesses uh, temple, uh, Medi Medi Medinet Habu. That's how it's called today. And uh, this one is uh, has a suit, but I th I think maybe maybe it was Karnak. I, I don't. I'm not really sure. But um, it's nice to have some memories like that, some physical memories. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, did did you see this? I I did not see the boat of Khufu. Did you see it? Yes, I did. Oh, you're lucky. You're lucky. Yes, and, I did. Uh, What's going on now? What happened? Uh, do this. It's just humongous. And and for this thing to be thousands of years old, um, they probably have done some work to it, you know, to keep it, you know, to restore it. But it it is amazing. And they have it uh, up in the air, suspended in the air. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if they've done any uh, restoration work. Uh, I don't recall hearing that, but uh, who knows? But it, it looks. I only seen it in pictures and and and, and video. But it, it looks so nice, so nice. There was another boat that was found. I saw a documentary, and all the pieces were, you know folded and stuff like that but you know and and they they, they basically build it back up and um but the when i go to the museums and i look at the furnitures yeah i look at the chairs i look at the, the 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 boxes i mean a lot of time i highlight the fact that you could you you would think it was made like 10 years ago or 20 years ago but you would never even imagine that this is thousands of years old. Right. In the Louvre Museum, there's even a folding chair. <laughs> folding but, chair. Uh, yes, yes. But it's going to open again. It was closed because of the uh, COVID situation. So from Wednesday, it will open again. And I will go back and I will share again some, some of the things that some of it, you know, well, most of it I've shared before, but I understand that people will not necessarily go back to the to the to the channel and scroll through the videos. And besides, it's not like before we are limited in our ability to scroll uh, so far back. So there's a lot of new people who know about this channel, and they will get to see a lot of artifacts. So I would definitely share a lot, a lot of uh, artifacts. Yeah, when when I went to Paris, I, I unfortunately I didn't have time to go into the Louvre, um, because I was really staying on the outskirts of Paris with a friend, and we just went into, um, Paris on on like a day trip, and and I did the sailing on the little, what oh. is it, chandeliers? <laughs> I All told right. you. And I saw the Eiffel Tower and, you know, we just went around and then went back to, um, you know, the outskirts. I, uh, I, I will say people in Paris live very well. I, I love it there. 
I like the 35 hour work weeks. <laughs> yes, it's true. In, in France, people work a lot less than uh, in America or in England. Uh, in America, a lot of people do two jobs. Uh, yeah. but it's because of the law. There's this, this, uh, this, this um, um, amount or number of hours that you have to do. And if people want to work more than that, then they have to sign some special things. So uh, I lived in England for a few years and they work longer hours in a week and uh, a fair bit of people in England have a, a second job, a second part-time job, or maybe two part-time jobs. Uh, but in America, people tend to have uh, maybe three, four <laughs> different yeah. jobs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so um, when you went to Kemet, did you climb into the Great Pyramid? No, I didn't climb. Um, I, I went, I initially wanted to go with some people who, some, some, some black people, some who um, has been dealing with Kemet and uh, they, they organized a tour, but the problem is that they did not have the set date and I needed to know be, to, in order to be off work and tell them I want to be off work from that period, that period. So that was a shame. So I ended up, you know, taking a, a normal cruise and we had that tour guide uh, and, and, and I asked him and he said, no, it's, it's, it's not allowed. Uh, because I know that some people used to, to climb before. I've seen some footage. Uh, but um, s some people will still do it. Uh, but no, I didn't climb. But you didn't climb, did you? Yes, I did climb. <laughs> did you go to the top? Yes, I went into that, that room that's, that's uh, you know, filmed all the time. And let me let me just tell you and your audience who will you know see this and hear this and this is the strangest thing I've ever experienced. You're standing and you're climbing up the shaft, and then you are literally crouching because that's all the room you have to go the rest of the way. And once you get to the room, you can stand up normal size and it's a very high ceiling. And as I'm going up, I'm feeling the walls and, and I'm trying my best to kind of understand how did human hands do this? Um, I really had the feeling, you know, during that experience that th maybe the pyramids were already there and they just built civilization around it because it's just impossible to conceive in one's mind. Uh, 5,000 years ago, someone can do this, not once, not twice, not even three times, because the way Ashra Kwesi explained it, when we went to see the uh, step pyramid, the true red pyramid was the first pyramid. So we're talking at least four times perfection being built. And you just can't really conceive that as you are ascending up this thing, <clears throat> standing at one point and then crouching, crawling to get to the top. So it's something you're gonna have to experience and I hope you get to do it because it is, it's mind boggling. Yes, and you know, when you say, uh, when you say crawling, I, I, I did not think from the inside, I thought you meant from the outside. <laughs> And, no, uh, from yes, the inside yes. I went. Yes, yes. Yeah, but I, um, I went to the, the, the Giza Plateau and I went around the pyramids, but um, when they told me that there was that there's nothing written in the pyramid, I, I decided not to go. Um, but uh, the next time I will, just for the experience, because when I went, I was really about the, the architecture and the writing. 
So mm-hmm. since there's nothing written, I mean, there's some sort of graffiti. I saw some documentary uh, somewhere where probably one of the builder, or one of one of the people involved with the building, they they, they wrote some some a little a little thing, but uh, we we don't have like metal nature written just like in in the hyper style hall and and things like that. But definitely, I I will I will um you know take that experience. Uh, the next time and besides we were limited in time every time we would get on the site uh the the, the guy would just you know present the the site and do a little bit of history and then he would say well you have 45 minutes you have an hour so right. I, was, I was more focused about you know taking different shots different pictures and different videos of the pyramids and and uh, so I, that's the reason why i decided not to go inside but definitely yes i I would love to 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 go to go inside. Yeah, just and, for the experience, just to mm. just to kind of grasp the and you you were speaking on architecture. I mean, seeing it from the outside is one thing, but going inside and experiencing mm. that and feeling on the walls and kind of seeing how this thing you can't even get a credit card, nothing thin between those lines and blocks, you you have to kind of, it boggles your mind to even, how did they do this? Mm. How did humans do this? Yeah, it's, a, it's a huge mystery. Yeah. Huge mystery. <laughs> yeah. And um, I remember seeing this lady, uh, it's a French lady, white lady, and she's a historian. She spoke about the pyramids and she was saying, well, when people say that it cannot be recreated, it's not true. It's just that we don't know how it was created. Well, maybe I can understand if people argue that there's not really an interest in recreating, recreating the Great Pyramid of Giza because it takes so many blocks and huge stones and to build such a huge structure without people living inside maybe there's not a uh, the cost will be too much for something that they will not get money out of but it has been said that there was an, an effort to try to uh, build the Great Pyramid well, I'm not saying the Great Pyramid necessarily they wanted to have the same size, but size, but they wanted to build one, and uh, apparently they tried with the means of the time back in the day, and they would not succeed. So they tried with the machines, the modern modern machine, and they 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 gave up. They gave up. Yeah. But um, I guess the Step Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. And um, it shows us the evolution. But what is nice is that the Great Pyramid was the largest, or let's say the tallest, man-man structure. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, until the, they built the Eiffel Tower or something like that. But besides that, the way it was covered... Uh, it was most likely shining, yes. and at the top as well. Um, I forgot if if they use some 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 gold uh, at the at the apex, but the way we see it now is quite impressive. But the way it was back then, it wasn't even something else. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just it's just fascinating. And you see, sister, what's crazy to me. <laughs> Is that this great society that is so amazing, that was so organized, that has so much laws and principles about morals? That's the society, probably the society that is the most vilified by black people. <laughs> that is true. And that's because of the Abrahamic belief systems, that is because of the Abrahamic religions. And some people are not Abrahamic, but they still try to vilify Kemet. And a lot of them do that out of jealousy. 
because they they can tell that there are so many things worthy of interest, solid, concrete proof and evidence that we can still see to this day. Mm -hmm. And when people study Kemet, they get to study many different cultures because you learn the history. He was invaded by the Hyksos or Hekakasut, was invaded by the Assyrians, the Persians, the Ptolemies, the Greeks, the Romans, and then the Arabs, then the British, then the French. So you learn a lot about archaeology. You learn a lot about ancient history. You learn a lot about, about records. So it helps you with the methodology. So you end up learning a little some some about languages too, you know the the, the way the things are called now, the way they were uh, called before. You know we say Horus, that's the Greek, was most likely Heru. So sometimes they'll be jealous because they learn very basic stuff about history, and it doesn't go that far back. And to them, the first century is ancient, <laughs> when really, in, if you compare with Kem with Kemet. The first century, that's yesterday. Right, right. Because we have the dynastic period, we have records. Pre-dynastic period, we have records. But it is what it is. It is what it is. But the hypocrisy of those people who talk about, well, we are from West Africa. You guys are only talking about Kemet. If you ask them, what do you know about West Africa? They don't know much. They don't study that culture, you know. Right, for exactly. For our brothers and sisters, there is the maxims of Tahotep. Now, that's the English version. That's the French version. You can find the wisdom of Tahotep online. But the beauty of this French version is that you have the glyphs and the transliteration. And the translation as well. Unfortunately, in the English version, you have the the glyph in the translation, but you don't have the transliteration. But that's fine with me because I'm familiar with the glyphs. But I encourage you, brothers and sisters, have a look at the wisdom of Ptahotep and understand this is 2000 BC. Are you still there, sister? Yes, I'm still here. All right. And sister, just if you know some people are interested with the matter of nature, please let them know that I'm giving lessons, I'm giving classes. Okay. All right. That that sounds good. That's a good thing that you do. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're on different time zones, and mm -hmm. I have a long... American work weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I spent a lot of hours away from home. So uh, I, I would have to, I really would like to learn because I, and Fudiji, he was selling the cards. So I bought them and I just mm -hmm. sit down sometimes and I'll just look and try to memorize. But you know, when you have a lot going on, you can't really focus on and study the way you really want to. I understand, and yeah, I understand with the well, the majority of the uh, well, the majority of my my audience are people from America, African Americans. So, um, for those who don't know, I'm in France. I'm living in France, and uh, so when I give classes, usually it's like. Uh, 10 p.m. my time, 9 p uh, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, so this way in America, it's, it's afternoon, you know, from lunchtime to afternoon, depending on the locations. But my advice, if you'd like to learn, is to start learning the uniliterals. And I'm going to share the, the link. If people go on that link that I've shared in the chat, it will show you that page, it's basically uh, the page of my website where you have the, the, the hieroglyphic sign list according to Gardiner. 
But at the bottom of, at the bottom you have this. Those are the unilaterals. Those are glyphs that stand for one phonetic value or one sign, sound. And um, when I give the classes, I start with this and I go through the sounds. Learning those, if, if I knew, if I knew, I will be so advanced now. I mean, I know a fair bit, but it, it's knowing those glyphs and the, their phonetic values enables you already to read names of people or different words. Some given names are written solely with those. But then you also have uh, biliterals, triliterals, and so on. But this is the best thing. So if anybody wants to learn the Medu Natura, my advice is learn those glyphs by heart and their phonetic values. It will be so easy later on. Now, let me put back the previous screen. Now we have divine, hold on. Um, divine's bow and arrow 5D who wrote greetings interested in online classes of the Med Nature. Well, whoever is interested, I'm typing my email address as it's as it as it shows on my on the on the flyer. I've shared it in the chat. It's B O S S S T Y L Y X at msn.com that's b o triple s t y l y x at msn.com feel free to send an email to me and let me know your availabilities and uh it's only ten dollars an hour everybody can just go and have a look at the different people who propose some metal classes and you will realize that it's probably the most affordable prices out there you're welcome, yeah. sister. That's great. She will thank you. <laughs> but um, I, learning a different language, uh, different language, learning a foreign language can, can be challenging. Uh, but um, I've, I've, I've I kind of studied a few languages. But um, the, the grammar of the Medu Nature is just amazing. People don't have a clue how organized, how well organized that language is. It's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. It's like they made it easy. <laughs> they made it easy. And um, I went through so many books from, from PhDs about the, the Medu Nature, but the, the grammar is just very well put out. I mean, it's just... It's just great. It's just great, you know. I mean, I, I could talk and, and use some terms, but it would be a bit confusing. But you, you have the, those who take the classes, they know we have the phonetic complements. Basically, we have glyphs that help us to, to be sure of the, the meaning of a word because in, in French, just like in English, we have homonyms. We have some words that sound the same, but they don't have the same meaning. Right. But with the, 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 the Medu Nature, we do have some homonyms as well, but the way it's written down is different, you see? So it avoids any confusion. And then th this is really, really helpful. Now we have someone from France. It's called, uh, I don't know why am I, and let me refresh it here. But um, this is divine saying thank you. And there we have someone who wrote, well, he wrote in French, Hotep depuis la France, which means Hotep from France. Hotep. Hmm. But, you know, are you still there, sister? Yes. I, I wanted to ask you a question. Yes, um, feel free. About the, the language. Are, are you in the belief that Sean Pellion actually deciphered the hieroglyphs um, 
truly. I mean, with the Rosetta Stone. I mean, because there has been some debate on that of uh, in the recent past, which was kind of convincing for a lot of people who actually uh, watched it. Um, um, what, what are your thoughts what, on that? Okay. Um, just before I answer, um, when you say watch it, what are you talking about? Are you talking about... Um... Well, SETI and Young Pharaoh had done okay. something. I know yes. um, okay. the, the okay. gentleman who wrote uh, some books, he has made some claims that it wasn't... Uh, Walter, Walter Williams. Williams. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, um, for the record, a book was written to refute the claims of Walter Williams. Now, I've not, I not read it. But uh, it's available on Amazon. I think the title is Has a Medonetta Been Deciphered? A Rebuttal to Walter Williams. Now, when it comes to Young Fowl and Sadie, I've said it a few times before because those two brothers have uh, quite a large audience. And those two brothers have said that the Medonetta has not been deciphered. And I disagree with that. I feel like it has been deciphered indeed. Not as if Champollion was such a genius that he came up with a way to crack the code. But it is because the Rosetta Stone, and I know I'm repeating myself for some, but others are, are not aware that the Rosetta Stone has the same text written in three different scripts. Mm -hmm. The Greek, the, the, the Demotic, if I'm not mistaken, because sometimes... The Demotic and Hariatic is kind of used interchangeably. Uh, but the Demotic and the, the Medunetra, or the classical Medunetra, as I like to say. Um, so the language is the same. When it's Demotic and uh, Medunetra, it's the same language, but the script is different. Okay, Just like you can write Arabic with the uh, Roman script or with the Arabic script. And um, Champollion had studied the Coptic language, which is the latest phase or the latest stage of the Medunetra. Once he had his hands on the Rosetta Stone, he could see the Shenu or the Cartouche. And most people know already that inside of a Cartouche, you have the name of a king. Right. That's what enables him to make a correspondence between the letters inside of the Shenu on the Greek part of the Rosetta Stone or the Greek text of the Rosetta Stone. Greek is a language that was known. And he could work out what the glyphs actually, uh, what was the phonetic values for the glyphs, for the glyphs written in the hieroglyphic part, you see. For a long time, people did not really think that the glyphs had a phonetic value. They thought that it just meant something. So he guessed correctly. And for the record, and and just to take it further, for example, I'm not familiar with Greek. But you have the reed plant that stands for the phonetic value E. It's transliterated with the I or a J. And um, you have the name of Ptolemy. You have the name of Cleopatra. You have the name of Alexander. They are written in glyphs in Medunetra, you see, because we have the phonetic values. So you can write about any names, even though there are some sounds that we will not find in the Medunetra. Just like, for example, in Arabic, there's no such thing as the P. So an Arab will not say Paris, he will say Baris. Now, he, he can say Paris if he's taught that sound, but it is not a sound that it, the P is not a sound that is used in the Arabic language. Oh, okay. Now, 
for the record, the Rosetta Stone is not the only artifact where you have the Greek and the Medu nature, you see. And we need to realize also that at the time when the Medu nature was still spoken, the Greeks were there. You see, you had the Ptolemy dynasty. A lot of people have heard about Cleopatra. She was from the Ptolemaic uh, uh, era or dynasty, you see. So the issue is that a lot of people feel like agreeing that the Medu nature has been deciphered somehow, some way, is like giving credit to Champollion. And a, a lot of our people say things like, the beast couldn't have deciphered our sacred language. But a language can be spoken by any, anyone. Anyone can learn Chinese, anyone can learn Hebrew or modern, modern Hebrew, and, 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 and you name it. You know, people can learn Latin, Greek, Aramaic, you know, um, just like knowledge doesn't have any color. Anybody can study a field, an academic field, and he can ultimately excel in it, you see, or at least learn and be familiar with it. So knowledge doesn't have any color, you see. And it is strange for someone bearing a Kemenic name to claim that the Medu nature has not been deciphered. You see? Furthermore, if someone teaches about the story or history of Kemet, what is it based on? Isn't it based on the Kemetic text? You see? Right, right. I, 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 I just don't get it how someone can talk about Akhenaten did this, Tutokamen did this, I mean, Hotel the Third did this. Hatshepsut did this. <laughs> what is it based on? It's based on the text. And those texts are, are, are in the Medu nature. So I'm not trying to throw shots. But this uh, premise that the Medu nature has not been deciphered or that we don't know the, long, the language is definitely wrong. And, and really, now Walter Williams, he wrote a book, and I read it, you know. I don't have it here anymore. I had it when I was uh, in England. So when I traveled, I couldn't pick up all my books with me. But his book is The Historical, Historical Origin of Christianity. And over two pages, he argued that the Medina has not been ciphered. So a lot of people act like he wrote a whole book about this. No, he didn't. And the book was released in Maathian Press, Maathian Press. And I heard him more than once greeting people by saying Maat Hotep. Why would you say Maat Hotep if, if the Medu nature has not been deciphered? Do you know what you are saying? You see? Right, right. It's, it's not logical to me at all. But in summary, what Walter Williams was saying is that we were not there back then, so we cannot know what they meant. Walter Williams has made a lot of claims that are strange, and I'm being diplomatic right now. But it's not an issue of, I mean, we speak those European language with this European script. Can, can, can they tell me, and I asked one brother once, and that was years ago, though, when I used to do the radio show, radio broadcast on Blog Talk Radio, like most of us did. That was way before the live streams. Can they tell us what what the, the, the letter A means? Who came up with it? What it meant? What it represented? Same for B, C. We know those letters. We know their phonetic value. But can someone tell me what it was initially? You see? Right. Those glyphs have phonetic values. And the phonetic values make up words. You see? If we assume that Walter Williams... Tao Sutin Seti and Young Pharaoh are right. It means that all the Egyptologists in the world, all the PhDs in the world are wrong. So those guys study for like nine years, 10 years to earn their doctorate degree, and they are all wrong. Ashokwezi, he reads some Medu Nature. I purchased a few of his DVDs. Mm -hmm. You know, so is he wrong as well? Ashokwezi 
he raised up Sarasut and Sadi. Sadi said it himself. Said he went three times to Kemet with Ashokwezi. Yeah. We said he said that whenever Ashokwezi reads from the the the, the temples, the, the, the different Medunacha that is wrong. I don't think he will say that. Now maybe he will say it now, but back then he wasn't saying it. And besides, there is a video of Seti that was online on YouTube. I think it was either after the, the debate with Alim Bey or after the debate with Nasi Yashuvel. Now, I'm not sure if I pronounced his name correctly, and if I didn't, it wasn't on purpose. But there was a question and answer session, and someone asked Seti, do you speak of the Medu Nature or do you know the Medu Nature? One of the two. The, the question was like one of the two. And Seti answered, I know bits and pieces of it. And I'm sure some people have seen that video. So then he knew bits and pieces of it. And now it hasn't been, it hasn't been decided. It's not logical. You see? So it's up to our people to think, okay, if the Medu Nature has not been deciphered, then all those historians, I mean, particularly Egyptologists, archaeologists, they are all wrong. And it's not just American ones. People who study the field of Egyptology, it's all around the world. So they are all wrong. I doubt that. Sheikh Antadio, many people love to talk about him and give him his due credit. He dealt with the Medu Nature. And Theofaro Benga, who accompanied Job in the 1974 uh, UNESCO symposium, he deals with the Medu Nature. He's a linguist. Right. He even wrote a book to show the relationship between the Medu Nature and the and different African languages. You see? So if they want to say that Theofaro Benga, who is a giant when it comes to history and linguistics, they want to say that he is wrong, they can be my guest. You see? But linguists spend years learning languages. You see? Walter Williams, I don't know what he studied. Now, I don't have any degree. I'm not a PhD. But if some people want to challenge me about the things that I say, they are free to do so anytime. No, I don't. I don't think it would be a challenge because you you make a, a great deal of poignant uh, points um, as far as not just the Rosetta Stone being the the only uh, way for uh, Champollion or anyone to to really study. I mean, people have picked up the mantle behind him and also studied. So I don't think that uh, it's, it's much to debate as, as far as that is concerned. Um, do you think that, I mean, because we're talking about a history that's 5,000 years in the making, do you believe that the early writings are maybe a little different than the later writings, let's say in the 18th dynasty um, compared to the earlier dynasties? Do you think that it changed much or do they know really um, if the, the, the things that they say these these words are actually are from the earlier period. I don't know if I even well, said that correctly, but no, I, I, I get I get the, the idea of your, your question. I, I get the, the main point of your question. Um, when people, well, most of the time when we learn the Medu Nature, we learn the what is called the Middle Egyptian. And uh, one guy that is often quoted is uh, James P. Allen, and his book is called Middle Egyptian. Now, the title is a bit longer, but it starts by Middle Egyptian. We have the Old Egyptian, we have the Middle Egyptian, and then we have um, 
late Egyptian, and we will have the Demotic, Hariatic, and then finally the Coptic. So the Middle Egyptian is like, for lack of better words, the golden era of writing, or maybe the time period for which we have the most writing. The glyphs have not changed. The glyphs remain the same. But um, the grammar was not necessarily exactly the same. And we can make a, an analogy with English. We have something called Old English. And with French as well, when we read very, uh, you know, text from, from, from like a, a few centuries ago, it's not the way that we speak now, but the language is the same. See? Mm -hmm. But I'm very glad that you actually mentioned Champollion again because he was not the only one studying the Medu Nature or the hieroglyph, the hieroglyphic. There was one British guy called Young. See, his surname is Young. So there's another thing as well. I have a video called Proof of the Decipherment of the Medu Nature. And unfortunately, I'm aware that a lot of people will not really get the point because they're not familiar uh, with records. They, they're more familiar with hearing people claim stuff and rolling with it just because somebody said so. But what I will do now, first of all, is to share the link to that video in the chat. Actually, actually proof of the decipherment of the medu nature so i will share the screen and try to explain to the people okay so let me do this okay so what's going on here okay i will i will have to uh, let this advert go Okay, so what's going on here? This is the Louvre Museum, Paris, France. Okay, and this is a, an artifact where we have the name of the King Alexander written in hieroglyphs. See, obviously that's French, so I'm, I'm translating for the people. And if people think that I'm making things up or I'm not translating correctly, then feel free to show them this video if you know some French speakers and ask them if what I'm saying is the real deal or not. I'm very confident uh, French is my mother tongue. So when, we, when it says King Alexander, this is Alexander the Great, all right? And here it says, vers 330 avant Jésus-Christ, which means around or circa 300, 330 before Jesus Christ or BC. AV dot, that's like BC, okay? It's a short for avant, which means before. JC, of course, Jesus Christ. Basalt, that's the material, the, the actual ma ma material itself. Now, when it comes to the Rosetta Stone, I'm going to type to give you the, the actual date, but I think it's 1799 that is, it was found. So, Yes, 1799. It was discovered by a French name, a French man named Bouchard or Boussa in August 1799. And people can go on any search engine and type in Rosetta Stone, and you will see that it was discovered more or less in the 1800s. All right? So that being said, we have this artifact there dated 330 BC. So that's <laughs> more than 1,000 years before the Rosetta Stone was found, all right? Now, actually, if we make the calculation, how long is it before the Rosetta Stone was found? 2,000 years, right? Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. All right, so 2,000 years before 
the Rosetta Stone was found, we have this artifact. Now, I will show you the artifact itself. There it is. I will go back to this. This is the breakdown of the symbols that we see. That's the artifact right there. 2,000 years before the Rosetta Stone. Now, this is the virtual that stands for the sound A. I'm sorry, for the sound A, the phonetic value A. That's the lion. The phonetic value is really R initially. This is Ru. The phonetic value is R, but later on, it kind of was used for the sound L. This is the basket with the handle. That's the sound K, like a K, transitive with the K. This is the door bolt. This is the sound S. This is the reed plant, the reed leaf. That's the phonetic value E. This is the ripple of water or water wave. That's the phonetic value N. This is the hand. It's the phonetic value D, D. This is the mouth, phonetic value R. And once again, the door bolt, the same as here, the phonetic value S. So if we read all of this, now, it's written from right to left. Okay? It can be, the middle nature can be re re read and written from left to right and right to left. But most of the time, it was from right to left. That's R, L, K, S, E, N, D, R, S. Alec Sinder S. Okay? Now, this is what I said. Okay? And, and also, another thing. Another thing. The reference that I've read, the, the, the art, uh, this is the reference, okay? This is from the Louvre Museum. Anybody can go to the museum. It's, it's, um, when you get to the section about ancient Egypt, you have first a sphinx. You have a bit of stairs. Then you go left. Once you go left, you will see a statue of someone kneeling down. And then the next room you go to, you cannot go to any other rooms. That's the direction of the visit of that section, that department of ancient Egypt. That's where you will see this. But for the record, here you have the artifact. Now, because of the, the website, we cannot see the first letter um maybe it was e but this is the reference of the artifact there's just one letter before so you've heard what i said maybe i'm wrong maybe i made a mistake maybe i'm making it up now let's see what the museum the louvre museum says you see here the vulture and you see the letter they've put a a you see so phonetic value r but the the, the letter is a then the lion they put l the basket, they've put K. The door board, they've put S. The reed leaf, they've put I. But it's, it's the sound is E, okay? Um, just like in English, you can say fit or you can say ride, but the letter is, is, uh, is E. In Middle Nature, the E or the J is um, the, phon the phon phonetic value E. Thank you very much, Sister Alex Little. She, oh no, <laughs> this, is <from> the <laughs> this is from the live stream. Uh, this is from the live stream. She 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 did make a a, a donation. So, um, the ripple of water they've put N. The hand they've put D. The mouth they've put R. And once again the door bolt, the same as here they put S. And here, what did they write there? Alec Sindres. This is the name Alexander. Written in Medunetra okay Alexander in Greek was most likely something like Alexandros or Alexandros now I was a bit long winded and I'm sorry about this but the main point is how come 2000 years before the Rosetta Stone was found we have some glyphs that spell the name of Alexander. And it actually matches with the phonetic values of the glyphs that we know after it was worked out thanks to the Rosetta Stone. Could this be a coincidence 
Let's presume, the, let's presume that the Greeks did not know the Medo nature, they did not understand it. And they were just trying to copy and act like they knew the language, you know? Like, let's say someone writes some letters that look like Arabic letters, or let's say he goes through the alphabet, for lack of a better word, of Arabic or the Arabic uh, letters. He knows how to write them and he just writes some things and he just claims, this is what I wrote. And whoever doesn't know Arabic, we have no choice but to give him the benefit of the doubt. You right. see? The people who know Arabic, they say, oh, that's not a word. When I went to Kemet, what was amusing to me is that a lot of shops, they have glyphs as decoration. Those glyphs don't spell any word. It's just there for decoration. You see? They did not even make the effort of writing a few names. Or a few oh. words. They oh, just boy. wrote a set of glyphs. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't mean anything, you see? But that being said, let's presume the Greek, let's presume, sorry, that the Greeks didn't know and they wanted to show off and say, okay, let, let's just write some things. We make some cartouche and we write some things and we act like, you know, we know what's up. Well, today, people will be able to say, oh, they just wrote gibberish. They just wrote glyphs like that to make a decoration. But it turns out that they actually definitely spelled out the name Alexander. So can we, can we even imagine, can we even presume that this was just a coincidence, that this scribe who carved that small artifact that I showed you, he happened to wrote some glyphs and, oh, he was so lucky that he actually happened to spell out the name Alexander. Can we even imagine that this possible? Okay, yeah. You see, mm -hmm. 2,000 years before the Rosetta Stone was even found, people didn't even know about the Rosetta Stone. And this, this alone is an indication, or as I say, a proof that the matter nature was... It, and the issue is the term deciphered. That's the issue that a lot of people have a problem with because a lot of our people don't want to give credit to Caucasians for anything... And to say that the Medo nature has not been has been deciphered to them is like giving credit to Champollion, even though he was not the only one studying the Medo nature. He was just lucky to come across this piece of artifact that had the same text with two languages, three different scripts, and one of those languages people knew very well, which is obviously the Greek. Okay. So I'm aware that what I've just explained can be a bit technical. I've been dealing with this for years. So for me, it's logical. And when you deal with something for a long time, it's like second nature. It's logical. But for our people who never took the time to, 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 to study anything about the decipherment or the actual text, the hieroglyph, the meta nature, it can go over their head. I understand that, brothers and sisters. But once again, people can presume that I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's why many times I say, just look up any university and whatever field you are wondering about. And in this case, we're talking about Egyptology. Then look for Egyptologists and they have an email address. You have some contact details for the professors. Even if you don't have an email address, you will most likely have a contact form. Just contact them and ask them about the decipherment. You know, ask them. Some people say that the meta nature has not been deciphered. What is your take on this? You see, and you can also ask linguists as well. But I digress. I was a bit long-winded. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see you have a an, a guest with you. Yes, Radio One Hotel Sen. Well, he he's around because he. He's probably doing something right now, but he, he'll be he'll be coming back. He'll be coming back. He's a regular he's a regular caller. Sister, how did you find my channel? Um, you know, I'm I'm a YouTuber. I, I look at a lot of different channels and it just popped up, you know, like a recommendation. So I've been checking you out, you know, for a couple of weeks now. You you've seen me in your chat uh, you know, a couple of times. So, um, and I enjoy it. I enjoy your teaching. 
um, it's official, you know, because I've been around this like my whole life. Like I said, from six years old, I practically um, just just fell in love with with Kemet. I always wanted to go. So um, anything related to it, I'm, I'm listening, just in, absorbing information. So um, it was just a recommendation. That's how I found you. All right. And just before um, I let our brother Ready One speak, sister, have you had a chance to see the video called Kemet in my art? You were breaking. I'm okay. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm gonna have to yeah, I can, I can hear the, the, the call. Okay. All right. Well, All right. feel free to. Yes. Okay. Um, well, Brother Radio One, welcome. How are you doing? Oh, yes. Yes, brother. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, brother. Oh, yes. I'm good. I'm good. Hotep. Hotep. Hotep, son. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, one of, I was listening in and uh, just wanted to touch on a fact. Um, tell the sister that. You know, these guys, such as Sara Susetti, Young Pharaoh, you know, all these guys on YouTube, you know, they're they're nobody special. OK, because they I mean, be, be, be diplomatic. I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> you're starting, you know, yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm being I'm being I'm being truthful, though. I'm being truthful. Okay, because... you, you know, the, the, the thing, you know, j just just before you, you continue, I will, of course, I will let you speak and, and, and share whatever, however, you whatever you feel like saying. However, you feel like saying it, but brother Southwood said he's been representing. I mean, he's, he goes a, a little while back in 2008. You know, he was really representing and under attack by many other people, many, many different people. And um, the main disagreement that I have with him is the claim that the Medan nature has not been deciphered. But he's been representing for Kemet and Africa. Uh, but but go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Yes, what I'm saying is, you know, they they don't have that. That, that merit of being in the field, you know, for uh, uh, studying the metadata and uh, studying archaeological artifacts, you know, and they, you know, and they pretty much, you know, they, they're really no different from the people that, that listen to them, you know, because they, I mean, a lot of them, they do nothing more but just, you know, sit in their living, I mean, sit in their bedroom, you know, read books and do and, and read on other people's work. OK, but, you know, but you rarely see them out there doing doing their own work. So I'm saying, like, you know, if. If somebody is going to refute the Medu Netter, you know, at least listen to someone who's out there doing the field work, you know, and producing their own work. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, there there there's no disagreement. You know, there's there's um, really nobody out there that's challenging if the metanator has been deciphered or not. You know, these guys, you know, instead of telling you what the words mean, saying, that, no, this word don't mean that, it, it, it actually means this, they they just say, they denounce it all. You know, they, they just say that it's not true. You know, and because of their own lack of study and lack of research, their only conclusion is, oh, it's not true. You know, but, but they can't give you anything else. You know, so, and... I, I will tell the sister, you know, um, do your own research, you know, because listen to these guys, you know, you you'll lose some brain cells, you know, and you'll come to find out that you know more than them. I mean, just 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 being honest, you know. And I was uh, debating uh, uh, someone from the, you know, from the Mossy Warrior Clan, and um, I had a discussion with him about the 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 ancient records of Egypt written by James Henry Breasted, and he was telling me like you know what are you reading from james harry breasted for and uh and he was like you should be checking out my books and i was like well who are you you know where you know where where is your work where is your proof that you've been to egypt and you've been studying hieroglyphics you know uh in your in your work and i checked out his work and, it, and it's just um a bunch of little cheap books you know that's that's a, a bunch of non-official stuff you know and and uh just uh it it, it, it didn't make any sense and you know, and he 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 showed no proof that he'd been to Egypt, you know. And when you look at James Harry Breasted and people like that, you know, you see pictures of them in Egypt with with big sheets of paper making copies of the hieroglyphics, you know, and and you know, and and putting in the work. So these guys, they're 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 overrated, 
and they they should stay in their lane, you know. And um and and I listen to them, and I I mean, when I when I do listen to them, you know, I just um, I they're they're I I just find something wrong with their teachings, you know. And and uh I can't, and, and because of this, you know, I don't I don't listen to them. I don't listen to them that long, you know. I I mean, it's because I lose brain cells, you know. So I say the best research is your your own research, you know. But you know, but really these these guys are no. I mean, they're they're no different from from any you know small time YouTubers. You know, they, I mean, they 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 never show any work of them, you know, um, out there. I mean, taking a trip to Egypt, you know that that's one thing, but going to Egypt and studying that's another thing. You know, some of them may may have been to Egypt, but they never show any 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 proof of them in Egypt studying. You know, they just go go to Egypt and they walk around, you know, and take pictures. You know, that's that's not studying, you know, I mean, that's, that's just going to Egypt and, and, um, yeah, but I just, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, um, yeah, these guys, you know, they, they're, they're overrated and, and they, they should stay in their lane and, and, um, they're, and, and you should do your own research and, you know, go to school, get a, get a degree, you know, and get out there and produce your own work, you know, and find out the truth, you know, but, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's there's nothing out there that to to say that the meta netter is wrong. You know, you have this uh this one book called the Book of Abraham, that 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 says that you know that um it's a a translation of Abraham and it and it corresponds with the Bible. Now that has been proven <laughs> to be wrong. <laughs> that is uh what we call fake meta netter right there. But <laughs> yeah, but I I just wanted to uh, touch on that. You know, I don't I, I don't want to be too long winded. Mm. And you know what you said made me think about one 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 thing. Made me think about one thing. Historians sometimes disagree on some topics, some issues, which is normal. We don't have an absolute consensus in any discipline. Doctors don't necessarily agree in the medical field on every single thing. They most likely agree with the main issues, practices, and standards, but then into, into specifics, they will not share the same views. There's nobody on this planet that agrees with everything unless maybe you have a slave-master relationship. I mean, master-slash-slave relationship. A slave most likely would agree with everything the master says. Now, brothers and sisters, don't you find it a bit strange that we don't have, well, not to my knowledge, and if it's the case, please enlighten me. We don't have any linguists, or let's say we don't have any PhD. And when I say PhD, that's because it's the highest academic uh, level that one can reach. How come we don't have any PhD that claims or that argues that the meta nature has not been deciphered? A PhD is a specialist, you see? Now, some people think that Walter Williams is a PhD because he's called Dr. Walter Williams. I'm not aware of him earning any PhD. And if he hasn't, please let me know. See, I'm not aware of it, you see? If somebody can tell me, and please do so. But don't you find it strange, brothers and sisters, that there's no PhD that says or that argues that the meta nature has not been deciphered? Isn't it, isn't it a bit strange? I mean, we probably have hundreds of PhDs. I don't want to say thousands, but we probably have about 100 PhDs who have specialized in Egyptology. And we have, let's say, three people with some influence that claims that the meta nature has not been deciphered. How come we don't have even one specialist, one doctor, someone who holds a doctorate degree that argues or says or claims that the meta nature has not been deciphered?
Why no specialist is saying that? That that makes a lot of sense what you're saying because people love to um, be the first to do something. And if it's something that they can prove or disprove, surely they would step forward after all these years of study. So you're absolutely correct in that analysis. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, I want to add on to like, you know, uh, like I don't see how someone can sit up there all day and listen to, you know, people like Sarah Asun Seti. And I mean, because I tried, you know, but all you hear is a bunch of F-U-C-K, B-I-T-C-H, you know, nigga this, nigga that, you know, <laughs> it's like, man, you know, um, people trying to learn, you know, um, you know, and, and that and that language is uncalled for, you know, you know, that's, you know, and that's, and that's why, you know, I, 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 I stopped listening to that for a while, you know, um, because you, you lose brain cells, you know, and, and some people just, you know, they, they get all in the hype, you know, but they, you know, they don't, they really don't pay attention to what he is saying. You know, they just they just being entertained, you know, and, you know, and how can you, you know, listen to that language? And 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 not only that, you know, how you how you going to believe somebody who talks like that, you know, <laughs> and, it, and, and it's crazy, man. I mean, it, it, it's it's he wasn't it's really always crazy. that way. I, I, I will say he wasn't always that way. He's been around a long time, you know, as as. Uh, Shaka said, you know, earlier, he was raised by Ashwa Kwesi. He went three times. He's been in this arena about Kemet. That has been his, his love, you know, to teach. But he hasn't always been the SETI you see today. He was a lot calmer in his youth, I would say. Um, now, he's, I don't know, I, I would like to say he's on a different mission. Um, maybe he's trying to get with, to the youth of today and the way they dialogue with each other. So, you know, I have heard him say that before, um, but he wasn't always the SETI you see today. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that, you know, uh, and I, and I, I uh I highly admire uh Ashwa Kwesi because he is the reason why I got I got into this, you know, uh study, you know, because he he was uh like really one of the first ones that I heard, you know, uh teaching about Kemet and uh teaching how how the Bible stole the stories from Kemet. And um, you know, but yeah, I mean, you know, I guess, you know, when when he uh he uh because later on, you know, he 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 went his own way, and I guess when he uh, uh, got away from the the that influence from Oswa Kwesi, you know, he uh, he started changing his language and, and getting off into what he called, you know, um, um, gang um, RBG, um, what do you call them, uh, gang banger revolution, you know, some some something like that, you know, <laughs> and, and it just you know, and then, and then after that, it just turned to a bunch of craziness, you know. He also he also studied. Really, with um, Ashwa Kwesi's teacher, uh, Dr. Ben. Um, so, a lot of the information he got firsthand from Dr. Ben. And I remember seeing a video Dr. Ben did also saying that um, the Medu Nature really hasn't been deciphered. He said that people were speaking gibberish. And, and you know, he. <laughs> You know, again, um, you know, the, I understand, you know, Shaka really did present information that it, it wasn't just Sean Pelion, it was other people. And he also showed that, you know, 2000 years before the Rosetta Stone, um, you know, these things, but, you know, Dr. Ben revered in, in the, conscious community, people who studied um, Kemet really got their love of it from Dr. Ben. I know I did. I, I mentioned earlier that I really wish I could have went to Kemet with Dr. Ben, but I did go with Ashwa Kwesi. Um, 
that's where I got my love from it, just seeing his videos and and the things how he broke it down. Um so Okay. You know, so you actually I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you actually went on a trip? Yes, I, I did go to Kemet okay. with Asmar Quasi and uh, I like to put it in the year in which I learned it through him, 6255, which was mm. 2015. Okay. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> and, and so I'm if you if you have an opportunity to to do it, I you know, he's he's really worth going with you know you learn a lot with him oh okay yeah i'm definitely going to do it mm. and and i would like to say to, uh, if you, uh, well a couple of things really um regarding the date shake and tadi up there's this book african origin of civilization myth or reality which is a, a english translation of uh, a larger work called in french national agriculture so i i don't really i've read that english version but um I don't recall if the date is mentioned, but there is the earliest recorded date in history, um, which is something like 4000 uh, uh, BC. So that's the reason why you hear some people now saying, you know, we're in the year 6000 and so and so. Uh, that recorded date must have been like, like 200 years ago. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, at, at the t no, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. If it's 4000 BC, because we are in 2000 AD, then you make the calculation that gives us 6000 something. So that's the reason why you hear some people or some comedic people mentioning the date 6000 uh, and 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 so and and so and so. Uh, that's because of this oldest recorded date of history, at least as it was claimed. By uh, Sheikh, um, sorry, yes, Sheikh Antadio, Doctor Sheikh Antadio. Now, um, Divine and Bo has asked, what was the name of the person who deciphered the Rosetta Stone? And uh, the message is just there. Um, he's the 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 surname is Champollion, and I'm just going to write it. In French, we say Champollion, but in English, you pronounce it Champollion. And his first name is Jean-Francois, Jean-Francois Champollion. But if you just put Champollion, his name will, call, will come up. You put Rosetta Stone on any search engine, you will have the name of Champollion. Um, now, regarding what our sister Anouk had said, there is this video indeed where Dr. Ben is talking about the people who claim to speak Mother Nature. And he kind of imitates them, and people laugh. See, it's a bit funny. And the way he's imitating is like, you know, like, like, like they're saying, like the sister said, like, like they're saying gibberish. However, I think it's safe to say that Dr. Ben had an issue with the people who claim to be able to speak the language. I've never heard or never read Dr. Ben claiming that we don't know what the glyphs mean. And besides, Dr. Ben has been taking people to Kemet. I've seen some footage of it. And I don't think he ever said that it hasn't been deciphered. And I don't remember seeing him reading from the temple or from any artifact. But I wouldn't be surprised if he did. He's been taking people to Kemet for so many years. I never went with him. So maybe somebody will leave a comment and say, I went with him or my father went with him and he, he read this stella or this part of the stella or this part on that statue and so on. But once again, Asho Kwezi, who was raised up by um, Dr. Ben, Asho Kwezi, we can see him reading some Medunecha. So I just wanted to make that... that uh, clarification You're Dr. Correct. Ben had, yes he had an issue with the people who claim to to speak it because some people might have heard that before it is said that the vowels were not written in the middle nature however we do have some vowel sounds like e for example and u as well when i say hotep senu hena senut we have the u sound and u is a vowel u is like you really 
See, it's, it's you. Uh, it's transliterated with the W, but I think it's safe to say that it's that U is is a vowel sound. E as well. Now in English it would be the letter E, but I'm talking about the sound E transliterated with the I or a J. So in writing, most of the time we don't have the vowels. That's in writing. But the people they knew the language. You see, and once again in Arabic, um, initially it, it, it was written without the vowel sounds. And when I say without the vowel sounds, like for example, I, I, I gave that example before. Kitab is written KTB. Now later on, Islam spread, and in order to make it easier for the other people. Or not Arabic, they came up with this system of putting some um, diacritical marks, the kasra, the fata. So, with those little dots, the word e, that's why someone who is not familiar with the Arabic language, he will know that. The KTB is pronounced Kitab. Unless he hears an Arabic speaker pronounce the word, if he goes to read it, he just has KTB. But if he's learning, there will be some explanation, or you have a teacher, and the teacher will tell him that's Kitab. Sometimes we come across some Arabic texts, we don't have the vowels, you see? So unless but the Arabic is a language, it's still a living language. It's not considered a dead language, like Latin, for example. So, well, some people still speak the language. So we don't have a problem about knowing how it's pronounced. And the last thing I wanted to say, I hope I will not forget it. Um, oh, that is, I forgot it. I forgot it. But uh, Hebrew is the same thing. Initially, you just had the consonants, see? Oh, yes, this is what I wanted to say. The convention of Egyptology is to add the vowel or the letter E between the consonants. It helps to pronounce the words more smoothly. But the Coptic being the latest phase or latest stage of the modern nature, the Coptic help us to know what most likely... Oh, wait, okay, oh, starting again. Okay, I had some connection issue. So, the Coptic help us to know most likely how those words were pronounced. At the end of the day, if we don't know 100%, if we're not sure 100% how a word was pronounced, it doesn't mean that we don't know what the word means. See? Okay. Okay. Yes. Are you still there? Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, I think your 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 screen had froze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're good now. You're good now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I was gonna ask. Um. Are Are you familiar with this uh, word? This hieroglyphic word. Um. Is the hieroglyphic word for boundary? It is. Is it is. It's called uh tas or tash. Tash no. Ta means land. Tash, I'm not familiar. Um, yeah, uh, because I've been. Do, do, do you have a picture of that that uh, glyph that you, that you can? Oh yeah, share yes, yes. Uh, maybe. Yes. Um, just, just give me a minute. Can, me a can minute. you share it so I can have a look? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold up, hold up. Let me see here. Okay. Yeah. Now, for the record, for the record, there's about eight hundred glyphs. So. You have to cut some slack to someone <laughs> if he doesn't know one glyph or one word that you tell him about. Because we have about 800 glyphs, and to write a word, a lot of time you have combinations of glyphs. Some glyph, one glyph can stand for one word, but some words are written with the combinations of glyphs. So that, that gives a lot of um, alternatives. Uh, so I'm looking at 
touch. But if if I see the glyph, I will know how it will be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen. Okay. I'm yes. Screen. Okay. All right. Because yeah, I've been doing uh, research on uh, like um, the geography and the boundaries of ancient Egypt. Yeah, I'm just uh, researching uh, a couple words. Let's see here. Um... Well, while he's looking that up, can I can I ask a question about uh, Gaza and Israel? Because I've had several debates with some people on Twitter, especially with what's going on now. Um. Was that region a part I'm, of I'm so, uh, uh, hmm. uh, Sister, I, I've heard everything you said except the beginning because it, just, it did cut off. It, it did break up, but it's most, most likely on my end. Uh, what was the, the, the place, the location that you're talking about? Uh, the Gaza, Israel. Um, was that a part of the Kemet um, control province? Uh, the, the the gods of Israel, Gaza, Gaza Strip, and oh the, Gaza Israel. Strip. Okay, 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 Gaza. Um, Kemet at one point, let's say, had dominion over some parts of Canaan, that is now called Israel or Palestine. I don't know if Gaza was part of it. That that I cannot I cannot say. So. Okay. Yeah, but um, there, there's some artifacts from Kemet that were found. Uh, you, you, you would have like um, what, what, what they call the Hatiya, that can be translated as governor or prince, that rule over several ter territory. You have the governor for Nubia, for example. So I don't know if there was a Hatiya in Canaan, but uh, indeed it's safe to say that Kemet at some point ruled parts of Canaan so but feel free if you have any other questions now now I can see it looks like budge to me and um, yes usually yes. I, usually I don't, I don't I don't have too much trust in in budge because a lot of time people say that it's outdated but um, I'm trying to see uh, Yes, because uh, um, the, the the hieroglyph like it's, it's, it shows like a um, like a stele in the front and um and uh with a um a falcon a bird and a and a like a boundary line I guess. Um, let me look on Gardener. Uh, let me look on Gardener. Um, and then if I don't find on Gardener, I will look for Faulkner. But Faulkner is handwritten, so it's not really pleasant for the eyes. Um, so where is Gardiner? That's Gardiner. No, I'll put boundary. Boundary. Uh, 20 entry. So, well, it is, it is mentioned by Gardiner. So Tash boundary. Yes, indeed. Yes. 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 Uh. Yeah. That. That. You, you, that. That word you can, is you, interesting. You, you. You. can quote. Um. Well. You. You should be able to find it online because I think it's on. What's the name of the website again? Um. When you. Uh, when the. When the. Uh, when the work are part of the public domain. Archive.org, I think. And the book is called Egyptian Grammar, and uh, the author is a uh, gardener. Sir Alan Gardiner, but we usually say Gardiner, G A R D I N D I N E R, and it's um it's the third revised edition, and that's page sixty three. Oh, okay, okay, uh, yeah, I'm, yes, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, Gardiner. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah because I, I definitely want to be led into the right direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's always good to double check. It's always it's, it's always good to double check, definitely, and and that's what I do when I learn a new word. I try to make sure that it comes from um from someone that's qualified, a specialist, and yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I know uh, a lot of people they uh a lot of people criticize uh, Wallace Budge, but 
you know uh some some of his work is you know is um is is uh is some of some of his work is accurate you know as far as i'm concerned but you know not i understand you know um uh, of them um criticizing his work but yeah um but i i have another um and and you know you know the things yes yes go ahead go ahead oh oh go ahead no i was just going to say i mean p p people can criticize him it doesn't mean that he he was just flat out wrong um it's just that you know egyptology it's about two centuries that we have that field and um in the early stages people cannot get it's it's like it's 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 new it's new and other people have access to more material more original artifacts more discoveries were made more tombs more temples were found so people got to have a, a better and understanding so it, it's not to belittle budge yeah, uh, yeah he was killed he was killed obviously yeah and apparently yeah. apparently a, a thief as well because he stole that uh <laughs> papyrus of annie yeah you know well according oh, to the do documentary that i've seen he he, he stole it you know he stole oh, it so, <laughs> but but uh but anyway oh, yeah, i mean europeans stole countries there's they stole countries they stole many artifacts yeah. that, that's the way they used mm. to get down and and now they go about it differently you know they, they come with contracts and stuff like that but yeah. uh <laughs> yeah, you know what i'm saying but um yeah just, um, just, just just for the record but yes what was the other point brother feel free but yeah, uh, I want to share my screen again. Um, yes, go ahead. Let me see here. Uh, this is from another. Um, uh, let me see here. Okay, this is from a, a a PDF. And you know, brother, while you're looking at it, one beautiful thing when you learn the meta nature, you go through some vocabulary, and when you go to a museum, or for those who have the chance to go to Kemet, and you see it written on the artifact, and you see that word again. And when you see a few words that you know next to one another, you basically get to read some short sentences and eventually long mm. sentences, and it just feels so good. Oh man! Now, I, I see your it, screen. Hmm. I bet it does. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bet it does feel good, and that's that's why you know uh, I see it as le learning the metanetter as a privilege. You know, um, definitely a privilege. Um, but yeah, here's this is uh, from a uh, I think a guy named Keith Set uh, Seath, and this is from the Tumbo State Stele of Tutmore. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, this yeah, I, could, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, no, I was just going to say something, but I would say it after this. Just go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is from uh, the Tumbo. Tumbo Stele, Stele of Tutmos the First, and it's uh, from uh, Seth, Keith Seth, I believe. Um, but yeah, uh, in his, uh, you know, it's it's like a translation, uh, like a, a interlineal translation of um, of, of hieroglyphics. And um, and down here, okay, it is uh, page six. Um, the word I was referring to. Uh, here, see here, in this, um, yeah, right here. Uh, can you see that? It says, um, yes, yes, his, yes, says his southern boundary reaches to the beginning of this land, his northern to that reverse water flowing south. That is, that's referring to the Euphrates River, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, for the word for boundary here is, um, like at the beginning, uh, T S, yeah, Tosh, yeah, and it, and it has, mm -hmm. and here you, you can see it more clear. You know, it's a, it's it's a stele, you know, and um um a bird and a I believe like a, a line a boundary line, yeah, and um, uh, hold on, and that's I the just, I just I just want to double check, uh, to tell you what exactly that glyph is, um, uh. Just going through it, a shoot. Mm -hmm. 
Pavisicimi. Should be able to find it. Hold on. For the sound shirt. Where is it? Sometimes I scroll through too quickly. <laughs> oh, man. That that book, that book is so helpful. So well done. Oh, there it is. U thirty reference U thirty. So hmm. reference U thirty. It's it's a Potter's kiln. Hmm. Um. It's, it's funny that uh, I don't have it there because uh, I have a small lexicon on that on that book. Oh, okay, but at the end okay. of the, uh, at the end of the day, you know, you, you cannot have so much because you, you, I usually think, well, you know, that's an important word. How come it's not there? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's uh, I know I know I read about it. I I know that that um. That first part of it—that's that's the steely. Like, oh, you know, you know. You see, you see. Now, now I get it. You see, you, you the, the first glyph on top of what you call a steely—that's a loaf of bread, and that stands oh, for the sound okay. T. That stands for the sound T. Okay. Underneath that glyph is a biliteral. It's a glyph that stands for two sounds, and it's ta T Aleph. Aleph is what. Uh, when you see something that looks like a three, that's the Aleph. Well, actually, it's there on the screen, actually. I'm so used to it's there. Oh, and ne okay. next, you have the sh sound. The sh sound is that rectangle, you see? Okay, okay. But mm. can can you can you show that 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 um, that last, that, that thing from Budge? Because I don't recall seeing the rectangle, but maybe I, I did not look carefully. Yeah, Budge, yeah, because uh, Budge, it, it has, like, uh, many different... Um, uh, mm. uh, okay, yeah, if, 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 if you don't mind, can, can you just show it? Yeah, yeah, here, here so, it is, here it is. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, what he has is, a. Uh, it looks like another... F well, he has that rectangle, but he has this, these two lines inside, and it's probably mm. a, an alternative of, of that rectangle, so that gives us the, that gives us the, the, the sound sh, sure. so in, if, you, if you put all of them together, then, then that would be Tash. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's 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 interesting. Um, uh, because um, it, it seems to me that um, that um, these boundaries that they reach, you know, they 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 left um, um, like a stele or or rock art, and um, uh, and I know like reading um, reading history and uh, such as uh, ancient historians as well, you know, a lot of these um steles or boundary lines that these um pharaohs made in the and, it, and it's talking about like far distant lands you know it had, it had a boundary um a boundary and uh along the euphrates where they the pharaohs tutmosis they e erected a steel or should i say a tablet you know to you know for the to prove that they're you know their their boundaries and the you know how far their conquests went and um and it and you know and it and it also says that you know um it, it mentions punt the land of punt the horn of africa you know and uh it mentions uh the far west of africa you know in in uh and it mentions uh the south and kush and nubia and you know and you, we, we still find uh the 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 jebel barka still still uh, of tutmos the third and in, in, in uh in nubia or napata but like these steles or these boundary lines, you know, they're they're not found anywhere else. You know, you know, like um, the one that that was erected along the Euphrates River. You know that there was no discovery of that either. So you know, but but it, it seems like you know that's that's what this you know uh, this word means. You know, uh, when it says uh, a boundary, you know they 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 left. Um, a, like a stele or a rock showing that how how far the the boundaries and the conquest of egypt reached you know and and i just found that interesting yeah. i see yes indeed 
Poon is pen wet in Medu Nature, actually. And uh, it is it is written. And uh, what we know as Kush in Medu Nature is actually uh, pronounced Kash. And uh, yes. that, 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 that rectangle that's, that gives us the sh sound, mm -hmm. we, you, you, you can see it with the word cash written. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, in the, in the middle netter, you know, I hear the, you know, in the, the writings of Tut Moses and Hatshepsut, they say my southern boundary is as far as the land of Punt, my western boundary is as far as the, the land of Manu, you know, my eastern boundary is as far as the Euphrates River, you know, and and that's the word that's used for boundaries is Tosh, you know. Yeah, so I, I uh, found that interesting. And you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, because some, some people that I discuss with, you know, um, I had asked them that question and uh, and they didn't know so i had to do my own research and you know that's how i found that out you know but yeah that's 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 very interesting you know and that's why you know i've, I've been uh learning some greek as well you know um uh, you know because uh the ethiopians yeah i like you know i studied the ethiopians so i, I gotta learn some greek you know but uh yeah um yeah, but, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually planning to learn greek as well because it would help me with the coptic <laughs> It will help me with yeah, the Coptic yeah. because uh, the, the Coptic is uh, is uh, mainly with uh, well, it's actually with Greek letters, but there's seven, if I'm not mistaken, seven additional letters that they that they came up with because uh, mm -hmm. those sounds did not exist in the Greek language. So um, Greeks can actually help you when you study ancient history, and 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 with me there was a, there will be a bonus. I'll be able to actually uh, get to be familiar with the with the Coptic. Yes. 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 Um, yeah, that's definitely uh, uh, interesting. Um, and the reason for me bringing that out was, you know, because, you know, um, there seems like to be some dishonesty when when Egyptologists discuss the like the, the real boundaries and uh, how far Egyptian influence reached, you know, through, throughout Africa and, and Asia, you know, because, you know, they and and, and the reason is because they they tend to be biased you know it's like they they, they want to keep everything uh in egypt you know close to egypt you know and you know like even um you look at egypt today on, on the map you would you will see that um uh, the western uh part of egypt goes as far as siwa the siwa oasis is, you know and uh that's that's where the temple of amen at siwa is and you know, and they and they add that as as a western boundary of Egypt, you know. But the Egyptians and the hieroglyphics saying that they reached the extreme west. They went far, far west. You know, they they went much farther west than that, and they called it the ends of the earth or the or the horns of the earth. And you know, um, the western desert is not the is is not the the ends of the earth. You know, that's that's in the middle of the continent. So you know, but um, yeah, but like that's interesting. Like even like. Uh, the southern boundary of Egypt today, you know, it 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 ends at Abu Simbel near the second cataract. So it goes. <laughs> and, and in ancient times, it was it, the the original southern boundary for for Egypt was Elephantine or Aswan, and um, and but but today you look on the map today, it's much farther south at 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 Abu Simbel, you know. So it's like um, the real southern boundary of Egypt. It's actually in Nubia in Sudan. That's actually Sudan. People don't know that. And and like the western boundary is actually Libya, you know, but it is included as Egypt because the temple of Siwa is is there, you know. So and um and that's like maybe like four or five hundred miles away from the Nile River. That's not even that's a long way from the Nile River. So people start saying that well, Egypt is only the Nile River and all this. So, well, did you did you even bother to look at the map, you know, and see the western boundary of Egypt, you know, it's it's, it's far away from the Nile River, you know, and um, and I believe that's that, that's where a lot of confusion kicks in, you know, but you know, um, yeah, I'm definitely doing studying on you know the the boundaries of Egypt, the you know the how far the Egyptian influence reached, you know, and um, 
and people people just you know think they got all the answers and uh you know but sometimes we have to learn to accept things for what it is you know if you know if they reach a a a, a part of Africa that's far away from Egypt and you can't find no evidence then you know that there, there, there could be an explanation behind it you know maybe, maybe they didn't want to leave behind any evidence you know um but that doesn't take away take away the fact that you know that that they were there you know just like the when they say they 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 reached the Tigris and Euphrates river you know um but still you find no artifacts along the Euphrates river you know but that still doesn't take away the fact that you know them saying that they reached the Euphrates river and they reached the land of punt you know and uh and I, I just think it's uh it's bias you know where they 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 trying to keep like all the culture of of Egypt within Egypt you know it's like well if 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 there's not a temple there or Egyptian temple there you know we can't consider it a an Egyptian boundary or e Egyptian influence you know when the the Medinetter, um doesn't say that you know the the Medinetter says that you know they they reach the western ends of the earth, you know, the eastern ends of the earth, as far as the Euphrates, the, the southern ends of the earth, uh, um, along the Horn of Africa, you know, and and um, and I just think, you know, that there should be like a a further uh, study on that, you know, because there's there's some bias in that, you know, because it it all has to do with political pride, you know, people. You know, Egypt want to keep Egypt in Egypt. You know, Sudan want to keep Sudan and Sudan. You know, everybody, you know, uh, they 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 got this own this selfish political pride. You know that they don't want to. You know, uh, nobody else. Um, you know, uh, sharing their culture. They don't. They don't, don't want to share. You know, share their culture with anybody else. But you know, when when history disagrees with them, you know, they they go they they, they go against history. You know, for their own um, political bias you know uh, selfish pride you know and and that's and that's the problem that i see you know yeah because uh they're they're definitely not telling the truth i mean about what what the our, the hieroglyphics is saying you know and what history is saying as well you know but you know just like uh the assyrian you know they they say they they reached the uh, the land of amoru the land of uh, the land of the hittites towards the setting sun you know that's that's like uh um far west uh, the western mediterranean which is uh, over 1000 miles away from assyria you know so they, they, you know they that's what they claim in their records you know that's what and the same thing the egyptians they they they're, they're saying the same thing but you have these guys you know they they want to keep everything within you know their their own country and and you know and that and and go against what history says you know and just and just have faith in their own imagination and and you know, to me, that's that's not right, you know. And that's that's why I studied, uh, you know, what the Medinetter is saying, you know. But yeah, definitely, um, yeah. When when uh whenever you know I can get my hand on on a, a couple of you know sources, is you know I'm, I'm gonna hopefully write a book on it, uh, maybe do a video, and and um, yeah. But I'm definitely uh leading up to something. <laughs> You know, you know, um, some people might argue that uh, even if a, a Su or a king claims something, it doesn't mean that it's necessary, necessarily uh, accurate. A lot of time, historians talk about Ramesu, but we know as Ramesses regarding the battle of Kadesh, his battle with the Hittites. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time they say that Ramesses um, exaggerated the outcome of the battle. Some historians say that they kind of came to an agreement or some sort of truce. When in the records from the side of Ramesses, it's like I whoop them, I whoop their behind. So some people might feel like, okay, we might have some text that says, well, 
my territory goes that far and that far. But they might be legitimate in questioning that and wondering what evidence do we have for that? Okay, the father said that, but what evidence do we have for that? You see? So what you've mentioned, when you have a stellar that says, yes, such and such of that king and uh, the different formulas, you know, an offering which the king gives, and you have the name of the deity, then you have different things that are offered, bread, water, so on. That's a clear evidence because it's like the gangs that we use graffiti and they put the graffiti on the wall. Like that's our that's our territory. The Americans yeah. that went on the moon, they put their flag, you know. They they they, they go to a country, they have their, their military base, they have their, their flag, you know, let's let's just know that's us. You go to most capitals in whatever country, that's where you will have the embassy of foreign countries. And of course you have their flag. So mm -hmm. that's a clear evidence. Mm -hmm. Now, if we don't have that, the question will be, do we have mention of such king? Do we have anything that lets us know, okay, there was some clear influence or dominion, you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But whenever we have records, we can't go wrong. We can't go wrong. And, and Kemet, the, the good thing is that we have so much records. So much that even in a lifetime, I don't think it's physically possible for any specialist to go through all the records that we have about Kemet. And it's understandable because we're dealing about, we're, de we're dealing with 3,000 years of continued continuous dynastic period yeah mm. yeah now here we have our brother afro asiatic, afro -Asiatic who wrote well let's say asiatic lion so the people will not be confused he wrote egyptians often lied about military battles with nubians slash kushites memory kerma well what makes you say so i mean what makes you say so i'm curious yeah, because um, I mean the the artifacts there the, uh, clearly debunked that. I mean because they 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 left temples in Nubia, you know. So in order for them to build temples in Nubia, they 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 have to have conquered it, you know. So, <laughs> well, know, the thing I I, just, I, I I don't I don't know what they would have lied about, you know. I don't know if it's about conquered or, I mean conquering or, or anything like that. So I'm 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 just curious. You see, I mean you know if someone tells me you know someone in Kemet lied i'm like okay well it's possible but when i hear they often lied that's when i'm like okay what is it about what is it that about that they often lied about you see <laughs> so i'm just curious yeah. well well you see you see now our brother asiatic lion writes embellishment that's different that's different there's a nuance there you know to lie about something and to embellish something we have a new nuance and you see we have a nuance so we have to be careful with the words that we use. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah. just for the record, just for the record, for the people who talk about the Medunet has not being deciphered, then what about the word Ibani? The word Ibani derives from the Medunet, mm -hmm. from the Medunet Hebani. I have a video about that where I show the University of St. Andrews and uh, so everybody can, can have a look and go on my channel my forever and uh, go through that uh, search icon and just type in um, Ibani African origin or African uh, etymology and, and you will see the demonstration that I've made. I mean, it's, it's not my discovery. But I just show you where you can see the actual text, and uh, we have the text hosted on the University of Saint Andrews. So it's, it's not me just making up something. There are other words also that derive from the Med nature, but um, Ibani is one of them. Ibani is one of them. I mean, um, I should have. Maybe I will have a.
have too many nodes there. Okay, if I type, okay, no, maybe if I type English. Um, okay, I don't have any, but Ibani is one of them. Ibani, there's, there's a few others, but Ibani is one of them. So how come you have that word that derives from the middle nature if it hasn't been deciphered? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, to, the, 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 I'm very sad about this claim from our people that the Medina Church has not been deciphered. But then again, I guess now the challenge, for lack of better words, all of you brothers and sisters, all of you people who believe that the Medina Church has not been deciphered, then find us some specialists, find us a PhD who has that claim, who has, who has that stance, let's say. Find us a PhD who has that position, you see? Mm. At least let's see a specialist that is ready to engage fellow specialists and let's hear his demonstration. But for someone to come and write a book about the historicity of Jesus and over two pages say, well, we we're not there, so we don't know what they meant when they wrote the symbol, so it hasn't been deciphered. With all due respect, that's ridiculous. That's with all due respect, that's ridiculous. Mm. We, we we were not there when they came up with the alpha and the beta and so on. Mm. It doesn't stop us from reading the language. Yes, and um also um about that boundary as well. Um also want to mention that as well like uh those like the people that reached those boundaries you know they they were military they were soldiers you know and um and like those uh tablets or steles that they set up as boundaries you know i believe that they were destroyed at, in some point of time you know um sometime in antiquity um you know, um, and I believe like when it says the Western, when he reached the Western ends of the earth, you know, I believe that that would be somewhere in Mauritania, you know, um, you know, that, that, that goes past the desert, you know, and um, but I believe in uh, in the Horn of Africa, the southern boundary, you know, I believe that those 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 steles or those rock were destroyed in some point in time. And that's why, you know, we, we don't see them today. You know, um, we don't know when they were destroyed, but, you know, but they were definitely destroyed and uh, along with um, many other things. But, you know, and that's why, you know, um, the evidence is from the hieroglyphics. The, I mean, the, the evidence is from the meta netter. You know, they, you know, they're saying that, you know, they, they set up these boundaries. They, they set up these steles as their boundaries and, you know, and and uh, unfortunately, you know, we find like no none of these steles in the western parts of Africa. You know, and I, I say that, you know, that at some point in time, you know, they they, they they were destroyed by some some type of invaders or maybe or like people fighting against them amongst amongst each other, plundering, and you know, and, the, and these um these these steles got destroyed. You know, and um. And I believe that there, there were, yeah, there were, there, there were also more in, uh, more of these uh, steles in Nubia as well, and they, some of them got destroyed, you know. But that, that's a theory. That's a theory. That's a theory. Yeah. And yeah. and let, let, let me just uh, answer a question after addressing this. Asiatic lion wrote alpha from Aleph. Well, alpha from Aleph. And then from Alif, you know, it's all this this Canaanite language, this Canaanite language, and um, okay, I will leave it there. I will leave it there. A lot of people talk of, like to talk about all the Hebrew or ancient Hebrew, but um, I forgot the term that Theodore Benga used. For that Canaanite language, I'll have to look it up again. 
But I think out of convenience, they just called one of these Canaanite language Old Hebrew. It's just more convenient. <laughs> now, we have um, Devans Baron Arrow wrote, do the current inhabitants of Egypt govern by Ma'at? Not at all. It's, it's not a, an Islamic Republic, but uh, majority of the inhabitants of uh, Egypt are Muslims. So, no, nowadays, they don't go off and buy Ma'at. Asiatic Lion wrote, Aleph is the black bull, the Alpha. The bull, yes. Black bull, I don't know. <laughs> That's a theory of your favorite PhD. I'm not saying it's not the case. You know, but indeed, yes, the bull. Yes, I left the bull. Mr. Sharp wrote, also they say only 30% of Egyptians were literate. literate. Well, <laughs> uh, there's a PhD that I've read, and um, I think he said like 5% of the people were literate. So we won't know exactly for sure the percentage, but there are reasons to believe that... Uh, It was mainly the elite, the royalty and the priests, uh, and of course the scribes that were literate. But um, I always take these figures with caution, really. I, I always do. Because it's hard for me to imagine that they will have all those. Now, I've read that the temples were reserved. So, not everybody could just go to the temples. I'm like, okay. I'm assuming that, okay. But there are a fair bit of um, erected monuments. And I find it strange that we will have some erected monuments in in the road, in the streets, and the people will pass by those monuments and have no idea of what is written. It is possible, but how can we know for sure? Now, Go all in road, the Arabic is not far off. Medunetra, like Hebrew. That's, that's a preconceived idea. And this time I will look for a quote. As for the record. Now, I'm going to quote PhD Richard Parkinson. And let me share the screen. Because the meta nature is classified as part of the Afro-Asiatic language family, a lot of people seem to think that the meta nature shares a lot of in common with the other Asiatic language, but here. Richard Parkinson, in his book called Egyptian Hieroglyphs, page 11, he wrote, Ancient Egyptian is quite different from Arabic. Okay. Uh, that was just for the record. I mean, I have other quotes that, that explains that uh, it doesn't share much. But... Um, it would take me some time to find the other quotes. Um, yes, it would take me some time to find the other quotes. Um, Asiatic lion wrote proto, but I don't. I don't know what it means. I don't know if you're talking about proto Arabic or proto-Semitic, but proto-Semitic is not a language, probably a language phylum or family or whatever you want to call it, but not a language. So we don't even know what we are talking about right now. Mr. Sharp asks, is asking, didn't the people of the Levant get, get a lot of their language from Medan nature? I, I would not say so. I, I would not say so. Um, where is the chart? Um, I, I took a picture of a chart. Let me look for it so I can share it. Let 
Okay, let me share the chart. Uh, this book is called Phonology and Morphology of Biblical Hebrew. The author is Joshua Blow, page 17. Uh, you can look the author up, and he, he is someone who appears to be quite qualified. Now, here we don't have the Medunetra or hieroglyphic. But here you have Proto-Semitic. Left, we have West-Semitic. Right, we have East-Semitic. And then it derives to Akkadian, Babylonian, Assyrian. West-Semitic, we have Northwest-Semitic, Southwest-Semitic. From Southwest-Semitic, we get Arabic, South Arabian, and Ethiopic. Then, from Northwest-Semitic, we get Amorite, Ugaritic, Canaanite, Aramaic. See? And from the Canaanite, we get the Old Canaanite, or Ama. No, I'm not sure if it's Amama or Amana. I'm not sure. It looks like um, well, maybe it's Amana. Anyway, Old Canaanite, Phoenician, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Hebrew. And then from the Hebrew, we get the Biblical Hebrew, Rabbinic Hebrew, Medieval Hebrew, and Modern Hebrew. You see? So we can see all these der derivation. And actually, we have Claudia Barton who's asking, Theophado Benga addresses that topic. Are you familiar? I'm familiar. There's this very nice video of Theophado Benga, and I will look for it because he shows a chart as well. So... I do nature. Now, I'm sharing the link to the video. I've shared it plenty of time. But I'm sharing it again. So far, Obenga. Lecture. You can even see the chart on the, on the thumbnail of that video. But I'm going to try to find Oh, yeah, the quality is not, uh, ah, quality is not great. It's a shame. Okay, you, you will see what I mean. The, 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 quali the quality is not, um, if you look at the video, he will tell you what is written. But just seeing it, just looking at it, it's a bit difficult to, to distinguish what is written on the screen. And I think Claudia Barton is probably talking about that video. But we can tell that at the top it says Egyptian. And then here it says Phoenician. Now, I cannot make up. Let me try to go back. I don't manage to read. Okay, now we have a close-up. But here we have Samaritan. From the formation, we have at least Samaritan here. And, but the rest, I don't manage to read. That's a shame. It's a shame. But he, he goes to um, to those things. Is is there any other chart that he shows? No, he just goes to the middle nature. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. But if anybody, I'm, I'm I think I have a chart somewhere. Well, I do have a chart somewhere. I took it from a book in the National Library of France. We can also see those different languages. Um, I will try to have a good look quickly. Uh, I might have it 
somewhere one of my slides so uh feel free brother radio one if you want to just touch on something i will try to see if i can find that that other chart so that people can have an idea of the difference of uh timing when it comes to the magnet and all those other language oh, yeah, sure. uh, derivatives yeah uh, i just want to uh touch on um uh, you know um you know uh back to what i was saying you know about the the boundaries you know uh because now a lot of people say that you know we, we can't take things literally but you know you have to pay attention to what's being said you know if the ancient egyptians saying that you know they they crossed the desert they reached the ends of the earth now when they say the ends of the earth they're talking about a coastal region they're not talking about like um over the earth or you know uh or, or where the or where the sun goes at you know they, they're talking about a coastal region you know so um like you know where where the earth the earth is talking about the land you know um and wh wherever the land's in the, the the land ends at a coast you know so, so they're talking about a coastal region so you know uh if they're saying that they crossed the desert you know or or they went east to the to the euphrates you know and we know that the euphrates river it it like it um it's like a it uh separates uh one part of asia from another part of asia you know and um but you know if they're saying that they crossed the desert you know i mean we we can believe that you know it you know um it may be my theory but you know it is a theory that makes sense you know uh, you know some theories corresponds with with um with with historical records and some theories just make no sense at all but it is my theory but it's a theory that makes sense if, if they're saying that they crossed the desert you know or they reached a um a very far part of africa you know why not believe that you know i could see if they were saying that you know they they um they went on a spaceship and you know, reached the moon then you know <laughs> you know it, it'd be hard to believe that you know but you know or, or if they said they you know they, they have flying horses and they flew over the river you know something like that you know that's that that right there is fairy tale you know that's that's not that's not reality but you know crossing the desert you know to reach um the western part of africa you know um that's that's reality you know <laughs> i mean nothing fairy tale about that you know it's it's been it's been done many times and, and people still doing it today you know and and uh, so you just can't, you know, if, if something, if something makes sense, you know, you, um, and, and it's, and it's, and it, and it has to do with reality, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't label it as fairy tale or fantasy, you know, you can't do that, you know, that just is, that just is, you know, that's, that's just as silly as uh, labeling fairy tale or fantasy as reality, you know, and, and if they say that they reach, a far part of 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 the earth or 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 a reach a, a very far region of africa and asia then <laughs> you know i mean there's no reason not to believe that you know i mean it it, it makes sense it's, it's it's reality you know we 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 travel every day you know and um i mean that's that's like saying well i can't uh, it's impossible for me to to reach California to reach California from Florida. You know, <laughs> when people are going to, from California to Florida every day, you know, they they travel around the world. So, I mean, for someone to say that 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 is fantasy and and that and that's not real is is absolutely uh, ludicrous. I mean, it's it, it's it's um it's a it's absurd. You know, for for someone who's to say that. The ancient it's impossible for the ancient egyptians to to have crossed the western desert you know it, it's a it's absurd you know you, you can you can do it by foot you and, and it'll take a very long time you know you can drive a car and it'll it'll take shorter time and you can even catch a plane and it'll, it'll take even shorter time but it, it can't it can be accomplished you know so yeah don't don't listen to any any person you know that that's, that's saying it maybe maybe people will, will legitimately dispute whether or not they are actually ruled over those territories outside of Kemet. so them getting to a particular location 
I agree with you. Most likely, it was something possible. Most likely, it was done. But them getting there and them ruling over there, that's a different issue, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I you know, um, you know, it, 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 you know, I, I, I definitely agree with that. You know, that's that's um, that's why you know where uh, archaeology comes into play. But you know, uh, until some some artifacts pop up, you know, that's you know that's that's all that's all we can rely on is what you know is what the what the ancient Egyptians said. You know, but yeah. uh, and in, and indeed, and indeed, really, with with most societies, well particularly the Abrahamic, anything that touches the Abrahamic belief system, we just go by what they wrote, you see? Yeah, and yeah, uh, right. we, we, don't, we don't question much. But then when it's Kemet, you know, there's a huge scrutiny. We wonder over so many things, and particularly when he's in conflict with the Abrahamic narrative, then we have so many reasons to, to, to have doubt about it. But with all fairness, you know, we need some solid evidence yes, yes. To, to, to claim whether or not they ruled over some particular territories. But uh, I can understand that. I mean, PhD shouldn't have a problem with that, but a lot of them are Abrahamic, so they would not say it, but it will yes. play a part. But normally yes, a historian yes. should not have mm -hmm. any... Uh, any, any any problem saying okay the evidence shows that they ruled that place in that place but there's so many things that are first in Kemet already you know so yeah. I guess they might not necessarily want to highlight all the things that puts Kemet in a good light but what did you want to say brother yes um and also like they're the problem I have with them as well, like they don't, they don't even entertain what the ancient Egyptians said, you know? Uh, so, you know, so it's like where they, they, they try to make it seem as, you know, as if they never said it, you know? And, um, for instance, I heard this guy, this guy named Wu Jawu from uh, mm -hmm. Armour Ross squad. And he, mm -hmm. he said that, you know, the Egyptians never left Egypt. You know, and I disagree with that. You know, and the the, the hieroglyphics disagree with that, and and history, uh, ancient classical history also disagree with that. You know, um, because I'm surprised he said that. that. Yes, yes. He are, said you, that. are you are yes. you are you sure he said that? Yes, yes. Wu, um, yeah, Wu Wu Jawu. Yeah, he said it. Uh, I heard him say it on a. Um, uh, he was on a Dagger Squad channel. He said that, and. and uh, well, I'm Barfield, surprised he said that because he's familiar. He's familiar, he's familiar yes, with the Medan nature. The Egyptians never left each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm surprised he said that. I, I, I don't know if it was a misunderstanding, or I don't know what he meant. I haven't heard his words, but uh, he, he's he's quite familiar with the Medan nature. You know, he, he's giving classes as well, and uh, they they chased the Hekakasut all the way to Syria, Palestine, yes, and they, yes. they they had some rulership. Uh, at least some some sort of rulership in those areas. So, hey, you know, everybody's entitled to to their opinion now. You know, yes, because uh, the ancient Egyptians, like they they were the like the first ones to really like go out go out on the conquest and you know outside of Egypt. You know, uh, you know, um, after the Egyptians, you know, we we hear the Assyrians doing it, then the Persians, then come the Greeks and the Romans, but the Egyptians were the first. You know, and... you see, you see, brother, you see, maybe he, he tried to mend, and this I would agree. Go all in, and I'm sorry to cut you off, brother. Um, go all in wrote Egyptians didn't live en masse in mass. Uh, so that, yes, I could understand that you know, they, they did not, you know, travel like a like, like according to the biblical narrative, you know, the, the, the whole people of Israel who, who travel. All together and left Egypt and settled in Canaan. You know, took away the island according to their narrative. You know, not that I believe in it. Uh, but 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 when 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 I hear the stat the statement the Egyptians never left Kemet, to me, the way I understand it is that you know, no Egyptians left. So but but you see, it's it's a, maybe it's an issue of interpretation. You know, I, I, I it's, it may be what he meant is that they did not leave indeed in mass. He probably that's what he meant. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, and I, I will also have to disagree with that because, due to the fact that when Egypt 
was populated by Egyptians, they constantly took back Egypt from, from foreign invaders. You know, when the Persians conquered Egypt, when the, it started with the Assyrians, when the Assyrians conquered Egypt, the, um, the Egyptians took back Egypt, you know, uh, sometimes the Kushite no, no. came. No, no, yeah. what, what, what period are you talking about? Yes, uh, during, uh, uh, cause I, I, I got the records, um, during the reign of, 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 of Asar Haddon, the king of Assyria, when he conquered yeah. Egypt, the, the, okay, it, oh, uh, the Ethiopian, what, what, the six, 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 600 BC, right? Yes, 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 yes. But they, I, I uh, think, I think, I, I think that was the end, you know? Uh, um, no, 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 it, no, it, 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 it took place like, uh, well, after that as well, um, like when um when the Persians conquered Egypt, you know you had um this guy um uh, Nectanabo, he 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 took back Egypt his his ancestors, um uh, you have a pharaoh called Teos, you know he he kicked the Persians out and took back Egypt. So they they were constantly at war with the Assyrians and the Persians for you know to take back Egypt. But actually uh, actually ne ne Nectanabo that's after that that's like uh. The fourth century yeah, uh, BC, you see, yeah, but yeah. because you see, T T Taharka, the 25th dynasty, is, is like one of the last uh dynasty where indigenous Africans ruled. But but when the Assyrians came around 600 BC when they took over Thebes, that, that was a, the last time indigenous Africans ruled. After that, to my knowledge, no, no, no other indigenous Africans ruled Kemet. That's when he was, you know finally conquered for good um, wasn't, wasn't we, it we, the Hyksos that invaded first conquered yes they invaded they, 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 yes they, 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 well let's say between 1500 bc to three to 1300 bc uh they they conquered first but then the indigenous africans uh got them out so 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 they regained control of Kemet. But after the Assyrians came around 600 BC, after that, nobody took control of, well, no indigenous Africans took, regained control of Kemet again. Oh, no, but, but um, what, what about the 26th dynasty, though, of the Semiticus and the, yeah, because they, uh, from, from my understanding, they, they, they kicked out the Assyrians and ruled, and um, it was them who fought the Persians, who fought the, the first invasion of the Persians, which um, was the last king of the 25th, the, the 26th dynasty. Well, let, let, let me as, see. Um, yeah. Let me this guy see. named uh, uh, Medicus the third. Yeah. Medicus the third. He was the last king of the 26th dynasty. But do, do, do you think that was an African? Um, yeah. Um, well, that, that's that. That that dynasty was um, uh, originated from Sias, which is uh, on the northeast, uh, the north, uh, no, the the northwest of 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 Egypt, uh, near near Alexandria. They 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 were called the Saiati, the Saiati pharaohs. And um, yeah, I mean it's uh they like they were based in the north, but yeah, uh, they they were definitely uh, indigenous Egyptians because they they originated from Sias and. Um, and some some some, some may say that, that's that's around the delta I, I i'm cautious about that i mean i i think yeah. you know they they I'm, I'm not sure that they were they were africans i mean when i say africans of course i mean black africans you know oh yeah yeah um yeah but some, some some say that they were libyan in origin you know that they, they come from yeah that, they, uh, yeah but they, you know that, that that could be the case but um yeah but they they were the ones who were at war and who, who kicked the Assyrians out, and then you know they they fought the battles with the Babylonians, you know they 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 defeated the Babylonians, and then uh, at last you know they they were conquered by the Persians. But even after the Persians conquered Egypt, you know they they the Egyptians were constantly at war with the Persians. And um, all and, right, and you 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 you're talking about Psa, um, Psamtik the first of Sais, right? Yes, yes, yes. Sam T. Yeah, he he was the he is the pharaoh that that is credited for uh, defeating the Assyrians and uh, yes, and, uh, mm -hmm. creating the the twenty sixth dynasty. Uh, mm. Yeah, and um and when that dynasty came to an end, you know um, the Egyptians were constantly at war with the Persians, you know, for possession of Egypt. And um 
And after the last king, Nick Tonabo, we hear no more, you know, no, no more um, revolts, you know, because when Egypt was was populated, was majority Egyptians, you know, we constantly hear of these revolts. But there there came a time where there were no more revolts, you know, um, the, the the Greeks ruled Egypt for over 300 years and, and uh, until they were you know defeated by the romans and then after the romans came the arabs and we hear no more of a of a native egyptian rebellion to to take back egypt so that 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 lead me to believe that you know after that last pharaoh you know um uh, uh there there wasn't that many egyptians in egypt after that you know for you know because if there was you know the egyptians certainly would have took back egypt so that's why i disagree with that you know, in in a book that I got from um, Ashwar Kwesi, um, outlining, of course, it didn't have all the the Nasut Bittis um, listed, but um, and I, and forgive me, I cannot pronounce these names. But the first one he has stated on the twenty six uh, dynasty is N E C. H O the first. N E C H O. Yes, the first. Okay, Nico. The okay. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not familiar with that one, but. Uh, and as and he states what? here for the twenty seventh. A dynasty. That's when the Persian rule. He lists no names because you know he's he doesn't care about them. <laughs> but he lists that they started to rule um, at the twenty seventh dynasty. Mm. And the thirtieth dynasty period, um, he has N E C. T A Nectabo B O the first, yes. Mm, yeah. And you know, all those people, those names, they don't even sound comedic at all. Now, um, those are the Greek names, however. But at that time period, personally, anything that's late period, I usually don't pay too much attention to it because I consider that after the Assyrians, after 600 BC, that's when the native, the indigenous black Africans no longer ruled. But it can be difficult to know for sure what was their ethnicity. Um, there is a depiction of Nectabo, the, uh, not Nectabo, ne ne um, Nico the second. And when I look at, at the, this, uh, the, the phenotype, I'm not sure, but I don't really, I'm not really sure. Okay, let me put Neko the first. Um, but I'm not really sure if we deal. The, the, the things that it's a shame when we don't, when we don't have any painting, right. but um, I'm not really sure if it's depicting a, a, a black person because. It looks more to me. It, 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 it looks more like it's uh, like a European type, because when when I when I compare with with the other people um, from the late period, the the the, the Ptolemies, uh, it, it looks more like that kind of phenotype. But you know, once again, there's something we will never know for sure. We'll never be one hundred percent sure. But when we have painting, it's just easier. It's just easier. But, hey. but anyway, uh, it's 1.30 a.m. and I have to work tomorrow morning. So <laughs> I will I will have to uh, I will have to conclude. But what I will do, I will let Radio One make his closing remarks and then I will let Sister Anuket make her closing remarks. So please, Brother Radio One, feel free to make your closing remarks. Oh yes, yes, brother. Uh, yes, uh, just want to say, yeah, it's been a been a good uh, good show, good build. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, um, you know, do your own research. You know, don't 
don't believe everything uh, an Egyptologist say. You know, that if you want the truth, do, do 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 your own research, and you know, and whatever somebody wants to debate you on it, you know, uh, just you know, uh, hold your ground. You know, come, you know, do do your research. Uh, you know, um, um, prove what you believe in. You know, don't 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 just take somebody word for it. You know, because you know the when somebody says that the Egyptians never left Egypt, you know, that's, that's their opinion. You know, you don't have to agree with that, you know, especially when the records say, you know, that's, that's not true, you know, um, but, you know, just, um, just be aware that there's a lot of dishonesty going on when it comes to Egyptology and Egypt. And uh, a lot of people, they're, they're, they're being dishonest and they're lying about well, what the records say. And, you know, they're keeping certain um, facts and certain, text covered up and not even entertaining it so that that right there is suspect alone you know so um yeah i just want to say you know do your own research you know uh study study the meta netter study the language and so you can get a better understanding you know of what was going on and you know build your own platform you know and um you know set set your own foundation you know and that way you know you won't look like somebody who's just you know, um, looking like uh, um, what they call a hotel hustler or whatever, you know, you know, which which I, I, I disagree with, you know, um, you know, somebody who's teaching the truth is not a hotel. But they're 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 more Hebrew hustlers than it is, you know, hotel hustlers because those, those guys are lying. And so, yeah, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, just uh, do your own research, you know, um, you know, stand on stand on your truth, stand on what you say, you know. And um and um and take it from there, you know. Um, but yeah, um just want to say it's been a good show, and I'm gonna definitely uh get off more into the meta netter and um uh, whenever I have time, you know, um, uh, because it, it is definitely a, a privilege to learn the the meta netter and learn language because a lot of people will say a lot of things, but you know, they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, especially if they don't know the language, you know. <laughs> A lot of them don't even know the history, you know, but but the language takes it to another level. And, you know, and that's, you know, that's that's all I want to say. Um, um, peace out to you, Brother Shaka, uh, and peace to you as well, uh, Sister uh, Anuket. All right. That's and that's all. Whole tip. Well, Jeff, thank you, brother. I know you're talking about the I know it's the, the one who's talking about hotel hustlers, but, you know, he's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, want, you know. I, I know who you, you know. I, I, I did not watch his videos, but I saw the title. He put my picture on there, and some other people. But you know, I mean, he, yeah, yeah. You know, he, he, he has stopped coming now. He has definitely realized that I don't want to put him on because he's been disrespectful. And I told him if he shows his face, I let him on, but he doesn't yeah. show his face. So I'm like, okay, he, he, he he's a Native American apparently, and a descendant of Native Americans. So hey, you know, good, yeah, good I want, for him. I want to be good. For yeah, <laughs> good, good for him. All right. So, Sister Aniket, feel free to leave your closing remarks. Well, I just want to uh, thank you for um, tonight's dialogue and conversation. Nice meeting you, Radio One, talking to you one on one. Um, I've seen you up here a couple of times when I'm able to check in. And um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that you allowed me to share my experience. Uh, going to commit and, and, you know, the little bit of knowledge that I do uh, know. Um, I'm thankful that you allowed me to share it with your, you and your audience and um, keep teaching because you're official. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, brothers and sisters, um, it's been a very long time. I did not uh, do live stream that long. That was three hours actually. And um, indeed, I agree with everything. Well, I agree with most of what was said. You you can do brothers and sisters. You can do research on your own, and indeed, it helps when you are when you know the language. You know the language is the heart of a culture. So, um, even if you don't have any certification or qualification, it doesn't stop you from learning things. You see, uh, at the end of the day, the people who have uh, degrees, they. They, they are recognized by an institution, so they had some formal training, and most likely they have more knowledge slash experience than you. But 
the knowledge that you have, it cannot be taken away from you. If you learn French and you learn the word voiture, it means car. If someone has a PhD and he's a French speaker, he can say so many things, but he will never be able to tell you what sure doesn't mean car because that's what it is, you see? So you build it up, you know, you start somewhere and then you'll build up and that's it, you know? And as long as you don't act like you know it all, then it's going to be all good, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, in the so-called conscious community, let's see, you have some people who really act like either they know it all, they know it all, they are the experts. And um, I mean... I'm going to be diplomatic. I could have mentioned somebody's name, but uh, we have some people talking a good game. And who knows? I might call out somebody. I might call out somebody else soon. But because there's no disrespect, I'm like, it's all good. But if he gets out of hand, if he gets disrespectful, I might feel like stepping up and defending that legacy, that culture that I've been des def uh, defending for so long. So, brothers and sisters, feel free to learn. And primarily, look for original artifacts, data, records, primary sources. And you find them in museums. Going to museums is one of the best ways to learn. And then, of course, reading books from specialists, or in other words, PhDs, that's a great way. Unfortunately, a lot of time, uh, their books are not easy read, but some, some PhDs make it easy uh, for the layman. But others write material that is more geared towards their peers because they present some some of their arguments so unfortunately in the conscious community we have a lot of people who claim a lot of things that don't hold much weight and it's just sad i mean the things are here it's almost embarrassing sometimes but it is what it is it is what it is over time, we will get some clarity. We will definitely get some clarity. So stay safe, stay healthy. And if I'm allowed to by the nature, I will definitely have it back at you. Hotel. Hotel. Now for the record, for those who don't know, I'm giving medical nature classes. And here, that's the flyer. Okay? So, those who are interested, feel free to holler at me. If you're not interested, it's cool. But I recommend everybody, I recommend that everybody who has not yet seen the video, Kemet and Ma'at, before Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, then watch it. It has about 300,000 views and really deserves to have a lot more. I just want to let everyone know who's gonna, who's, who's gonna, uh, who's listening now and who's going to listen to this, uh, this, uh, stream in the future. I just had a, my first Meta Nature class by Brother Shaka today, and I've had other, uh, Meta Nature lessons by other teachers, and I can tell you right now, the brother is the best in the game. He is, uh, that, that was one of the best classes I've ever had, ever. So if you're interested in learning the meta nature, if you're interested in getting the basics of it, Brother Shaka is an awesome teacher. Get with him, and it's extremely affordable. This brother is giving us his time and his skills, and he's basically giving it away. I mean, I, you know, I just consider it a donation. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody is interested in learning the better nature, get with this brother right here. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome teacher. And I'll end with that. Hotep Senu, Hena Senut. This is Julie, also known as Servant of Yah. And I'm currently taking the Medunetra classes with Brother Shaka. 
and it has been an amazing experience. Only two lessons so far, and I feel like um, I've been taking the classes for months, just with the uh, how in depth he goes into the vocabulary words, um, the construction of the language, the grammar. Um, it's been immeasurable, um, the experience. And one thing that comes across hands down is his uh, extreme passion for teaching this to anyone who is willing to learn and has a, a, an interest in learning. So I highly suggest um, if you are interested, even a minimal interest, that uh, you subscribe to the classes with Brother Shaka. Um, it's such a nominal amount for how much you get. Uh, I know like our last class was uh, over two and a half hours. It felt like two minutes, but because that's how, you know, involved you are in what he's teaching and how he teaches and how compassionate he is about what he teaches. Um, also with sharing materials free of charge, uh, no question, no doubt. Um, it's just what he does. He doesn't have to, but he does. And so I just wanted to give a short testimonial um, about the class and the effectiveness of the class and uh, all of that is attested to uh, how studied Brother Shaka is. Uh, so I highly recommend anyone with a minimal interest that you do sign up for the Medrunetia class. Hotep. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel which is Ma'at Forever forget to watch the video entitled Kemet and Ma'at. Don't forget to share Kemet and Ma'at for my channel on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, or other social media that you use. Email, text messages, you name it. Those who wish to donate can do so on paypal.me slash ma'at forever.